Hello, everybody, and welcome back. This is Jeff Jones. Nice to see everybody out there. Today, I have a special guest with me. Very special, special guest, longtime friend, uh, Jack from Foul Play, also known as Jack61. It depends uh, in, in what... Um, in what position you first met Jack, whether it's on Discord or on YouTube. But welcome to the show, Jack. I appreciate you being here. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Hope you're doing well and been a long time since we've chatted. Hope everybody out there is doing well also. And, you know, there's another realm I was also known in before any of this. What, Reddit? That's Reddit. That's Reddit. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. That's so you might know Jack61 from Reddit, YouTube, Discord, um, or... Maybe some underground. Maybe maybe you got no. some out there. <laughs> That's pretty much about it. <laughs> All right, fair I, enough. Yeah. Well, you've been around for a while, and uh, you know we did our we did the discussing a murderer show together. You were on the the this YouTube channel quite a few times from got from the beginning. I think I've had you on as a guest the, when we did After Dark and a couple different iterations of uh some shows and uh i just thought uh it'd be nice to catch up and you know maybe i'll talk to uh another uh you know longtime friend and guest uh in the future but i thought i'd lead off with you i think i honestly think you were the first guest i ever had on the youtube uh channel here so uh another iteration i'm pretty sure you were actually i think i went back and checked and uh wow you, you might have actually been the first first person I had on. Um, of course, you know, um, other people I've had on before many times, some of them no longer with us, some of them uh, hope to get back on, you know, shout out to uh, to the passing of Linda, who uh, checking convictions, who was just such a great uh, supporter of the show and the channel early on, she kind of actually pushed me to kind of do this. She she was really forceful her and BB and um, and so, uh, they really were like, you know what, you should, you should try to get, you know, this channel going. And so, um, shout out to them and, uh, best wishes to their friends and family, um, as well. So, and to, and, and welcome to, uh, to new subscribers, had a couple of new people, as you know, Jack, I've been dabbling with the artificial intelligence world and kind of forming a little bit of a of a regular YouTube show trying to do some some artificial intelligence news. And I think I'm going to kind of form that into uh, just kind of a straight AI news program, maybe put that out weekly um, and do it as a premiere. I've been doing it as a live, but I think I'm going to do it as a premiere and then maybe have a live chat afterwards. So that should be coming out uh, regularly uh, for those of you who are sticking with me. but. You know, I've never really lost interest. You know, I st after discussing a murder, um, discussing a murder season two, actually, um, I said I was going to take take a step away from the case, and uh, so I'd like to talk and get update from the case at some point in the show. But first, um, and that is the Stephen Avery uh, appeals case, if if anyone's wondering. Um, but first, I kind of wanted to ask you some questions, and I've compiled a list, very thought out, thoughtful list, compiled between two of my favorite lists of questions. And the first one is the Stephen Colbert questionnaire and James Lipton's, uh, which actually came from Bernard Pivot, I believe is our pivot, how you say, um, from inside the actor's studio. So I'm going to combine those and take my favorite uh, questions from those two questionnaires. And this way we're going to get to know Jack, kind of a little more lighthearted and maybe get to know you a little bit better. So you ready for the questionnaire, Jack? I'm ready. Do it. All right. So first question, what's your favorite word? Or do you have one? Or what word uh, do you like? Freedom. Freedom. And then what's your least favorite word? Hate. Hate. What sound or no noise do you love? A laughing child. And what sound do you hate? Nails on the chalkboard. Oh, I can agree with that one. Uh, what's your favorite curse word? Don't worry, you can say it here. <laughs> so or many to pick. So many to pick from. Holy shit. Uh, 
uh, probably son of a bitch. I, I just you know, kind of a combi- com- combination there. But yeah, I really like uh, Gleason when he was in uh, I think uh, Smokey and the Bandit, yeah. and he'd say "some bitch." You some bitch. Yeah, it was like some bitch. It wasn't son of a bitch. Some bitch. Right. Right. Yeah, I like that one a lot. That iteration is uh, probably even leaving a little bit better, but yeah, go ahead. What profession other than the one that you have done in your life would you not like to do? What profession would you never want to attempt? God, that's probably um, probably doctor, nurse. Oh, yeah, that would be a tough one. Yeah. And what profession would you have liked to do that you never got to do? You're going to think I'm probably about two-thirds nuts. Machinist. A machinist? Like with the yeah, lathe? Like C- C- CNC lathe and that kind of thing. I, I almost went into that. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. Learn- See, we're learning a little bit more about Jack as we go here. Okay, almost done. A few more questions. The What is the best sandwich? <laughs> Oh, man, again, so many options here. I'm, so I'm, there, there's so many things that I mean, I, I'm, I'm gonna eat anything, but I'm, I'm pretty broad. There's not too many, but I'd have to say, um, you talking about this like a, if I just, is it have to be from somewhere specific or just a sandwich in general? Like a ham and cheese or a turkey and Swiss. What are we, what are we looking at? Oh, we're, we're definitely like at the. Uh, well, I can just make this comparison. It's really difficult to beat for me, and that's the cold cut combo with pepper jack, pretty well loaded from Subway. Double meat, <laughs> double meat. By the way, that brings me back to Happy Gilmore because that's what he says in Happy Gilmore. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a cold cut combo. That's really funny. There you, um, there you go. This is not about me, but I've heard a lot of people answer this question, and I've always wanted someone to ask me, so I'm just going to answer it anyway. And I think the best sandwich is the sandwich that someone else makes for you. That is a great answer. Yep. For some reason, yep. when someone else makes it, they have their own like spin on it, something that you're not used to. And for some reason, when someone, especially if they make it with love, yep. that's, like that's mom. Like mom. Like mom. Like mom. Right. You're like, how did I, you know, I could have never made it like this. What do you do? I don't know. She put love in it or something. Right. Smear it with love. Here you go. Honey. Okay. What's, what's one thing that you should really throw out? One thing you should really throw out? That you, Jack, should really, you should throw this out. You should really throw it out. But you haven't yet. Oh, man. Um,. Man, that's 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 hard to answer. Are you a hoarder? In in a sense, because there's so many things, you know, you, you think about things in your mind mentally, you could right. like get the hell rid of. Yeah. Or things well, in your, works. you know, you know, uh, or things, uh, and I say mentally, I meant emotionally, because that's generally where everything's tied to is your emotion, sure. right? Sure. Or things that you collect, you know, you should crap in your house and so forth. You gotta, oh man! You gotta let go of one thing. What is it? Plus, letting go is a good good exercise as well. By the way, it it can be freeing. It can, it can make you let go of things that you really cling to that you shouldn't, that drag you backwards. You know, mm-hmm. and you know, I, I, I don't mean to get teary or jerky or drama or all this, but you know, there's a lot of emotion and a freeze a freezing in time when our daughter passed away. Right. 2013. And, you know, I know I should let go of some of that, but I'm frozen there and I can't. I'm fro- that, that I that time. Got, well, I, I understand that. I, I, I get it. And I, but I've lived with it long enough to understand that there's some pieces of that, I, that because um, you always, you yeah. always blame, you always blame yourself. What uh-huh. could I have done to have not that for this not to have happened? And I need to let that go more than I have. All right. So I, I, that, that's, pretty that. that's pretty deep. That's pretty deep. Deep answer. <laughs> We're really getting to know Jack here today, guys. So uh, I'm glad you tuned in for this one. But yeah, I you know that that's definitely some letting go of blame. How about is that summing it up? Letting go of guilt, something like yes. that. Yes. 
Go yes. Okay. No, knowing that there's nothing that I could have done. There's I nothing. know that. Nothing. Absolutely nothing that any of us could have done differently. Nothing. So, yeah. What's the scariest animal? Oh, man. These are so easy but tough questions, right? It, it is because there's, there's a bunch of them that I'm... I'm really frightened of, and I—I I mean, for me, I—I I, I guess it's not really an animal, but it kind of is to me, and that's a spider. Oh. I loathe—I loathe spiders oh. and snakes, and snakes for the most part. The spiders we petrify don't have me. Snakes on the island here, and uh, it's one of the things that I—I uh, I cherish when I jog or I'm outside or I'm taking a hike, and I go, you know what? There's no snakes here. It's just it's such a wonderful that's, piece that's of crazy. Mind. No, that's yeah, crazy. And, how, and, considering and how much jungle there is. Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, we are secluded. Number two, we've tried really hard to keep them out. Number three, Good. we have a huge population of mongoose. So even if some got here, yeah, the mongoose are just they, they and we do get them. We like especially near the airport. There's like I would say every couple of years or every year we get a sighting somebody's walking with their grandma or something like oh we spotted a snake near the airport and nothing like we never see if the population take off and i really think it's because the mongoose are just they're just everywhere they're just uh, and they if just, you don't know a yeah, mongoose is like a I, I, yeah, I squirrel do. Go type ahead. animal but like a yeah. little bit meaner and a little bit bigger and like a uh, longer tail well yeah uh, they're like a they're like a they got some honey badger on them but they just don't well, give up yeah. but I yeah, just don't. So they are they're an interesting creature. They were uh, long story short, if you know a little history lesson, they were brought to Hawaii purposefully because they wanted to reduce the rat population. However, the harebrained scheme was not very well researched, and uh, the mongoose is uh, a daytime animal, and rats are nocturnal, so they never meet. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It is right, so it's like oops. Um, but I think what is it the uh, what is that the the mink? Now if you could if they would have got mink here, mink attack rats like yeah nothing I've ever seen. There's YouTube channels if you want to check them out. Check out the mink. Um, they use mink. They they catch mink. They train them. They breed them just to go after uh, rat populations. It's pretty That's... wild. So. Yep, yep, no snakes here. So I would have to agree with you on that one. Okay, apples or oranges? Apples. apples. Love apples. Favorite favorite food of all time. Is that apple. right? You have a specific Absolutely. kind of apple? Macintosh? Um, long, long, long as it's not too tart, I, I like it. Uh, I mean, golden a... delicious. Golden delicious. And, you know. Ooh, that's a good apple. They have some Fiji apples that are really good, too. I like Fiji apples, too. Yeah, yep. those are some really good ones. We have this uh, variety here called mountain apple, which is a wild apple. It's almost a cross between an apple and a pear. They're like, it's like a soft apple. Oh, wow. Uh, they, they grow wild here. So that, you know, we, people like hand them out and give them out for free quite often. Nice. Um, I've used them in making kimchi actually for my sugar. Um, okay. Next question. Just a few more, and then we'll move on to something, some, some substance here today, Jack. Have Good. you ever asked anyone for their autograph? Um, no. You mean you mean somebody fa famous? Yeah. No, I I, I tried to uh, years ago, but couldn't get near enough to him. Who was that? Back many years ago in the late. Uh, I guess it was very late seventies, early eighties. I don't remember exactly. It, it was around the nineteen eighty time frame. Um, I went to a concert, thirty eight special, and or not thirty eight special, but uh, the, the, the Charlie Daniels and I don't remember the other Southern wow. rock band, but yeah. they the the Coliseum that that used to be there. The the floor above the stage, it was just floor. And it went right up to the stage. So when they were out there, and of course Charlie Daniels, they, they, they closed the, the concert, but I tried to, I was trying to get his attention to, because he did sign some. 
Well, he said he stuck around, signed some autographs, and that I couldn't get anywhere near the stage. Dang. Yeah. There's the only one. So hold on loosely, right? And yeah, that was I saw them in eighty eighty three or. Was that Charlie 80. Daniels band? Is uh, Devil Went Down to Georgia? Is that right? Yes, that's right. All right. That's a cool show. I uh, actually met um, this band called Trainwreck, and if you're familiar with the band Tenacious D, I met the other guy, not Jack Black, but the other guy, Kyle Gass. Um, he was in this smaller band, and I went to a show in Milwaukee, and there was only 13 people <laughs> the whole show. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. So he, uh, he signed all the autographs we wanted. He... He personally thanked everyone at the show, went around and shook everybody's hand. It was really funny. Wow, that's neat. Yeah, it was neat. And uh, I swear to God, I've gotten autographs before. Um, maybe maybe a baseball player or something. I just can't remember. Um, I had a Ray Nitschke autograph once, but I didn't ask him personally. Uh, somebody in my family stood in line to get it. And I almost... Got Pamela Anderson's autograph, but the line was too long, and I didn't. Oh know yeah, that. she was at a uh, a car like what do they have the car convention? What is that called? The auto show. Oh yeah, and, yep. meet, and this was like at her peak fame, Baywatch. Oh. Yeah, like nineteen ninety six or something like I was gonna that. Gonna say back in the nineties, yeah. Yeah, and I remember seeing her like you know. And then, I, and then we were like, oh, look at that line. And we we're like, I don't want to stand in. I don't even stand in line that long for a roller coaster or whatever. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I kind of regret right. it now, to tell you the truth. But it is what it is. Okay. Um, favorite action movie? Do you have a favorite action movie? I have a, I have a couple of favorite action movie series. Okay. Terminator. Oh, yeah. Alien. I was gonna say Alien always comes up for me. Yep. Yeah. I, I could I could flip a switch on either one actually. And there's actually I actually just saw it on Twitter uh, yes last night I think it was. They're doing a this Alien um, Aliens I guess. It's the cast and crew talking about shooting Aliens when they when they made it. It's got a bunch of different actors in there. I didn't see Signore Weaver but that mm -hmm. doesn't mean she won't be in it but. There's actually a, a, a YouTube trailer about it. Looks pretty cool. But yeah, I really like Aliens too. And whoever it's, said we didn't have a strong female lead, you know, Sigourney oh, Weaver is an oh, ass kicker. But, she is know. a. Yeah, and they even her talk her about her. Interview. They even talk about her going feral the way she portrayed that role awesome. in, Ali in Aliens. You know, going back to get the girl. I think she ad libbed ad libbed that famous line, something die you son of a bitch or something like that uh, probably it yeah. wouldn't surprise me at all <laughs> uh favorite smell do you have a favorite smell there's a lot um, of questions okay we're, we're doing one more i think after this um I, i'm gonna have to really go with steaks on the grill I, okay. I, ribs you know that that, that it's just comforting to me because I know something really good's got heading my way. I was going to make a joke. Al Pacino, scent of a woman? No. <laughs> Ooh, ah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I think mine is uh, lilac. I That is just an intoxicating smell, that lilac. Or lavender, one of those two. Really good smell. Yep. No um, split question here. Not to get too heavy. What happens when we die? Well, you know, as time has went on for me, you know, um, my beliefs have changed, and especially again surrounding the watching what Taylor went through. But sure, I, you know, I personally believe that there's more than once the lights are out here on this plane. I think there's something else, and we don't know what that is. We're not supposed to know. Yeah, that's just what I we think. We did. It would change our outlook too much, right? We would. I think so. We would adjust yep. it, or we would be too too wild, or we would be too conservative. We would, you know, uh, given our free will. I like that answer. And then it's kind of a similar 
this is straight from the James Lipton questionnaire. If there is a God and you reach the pearly gates, what would you want God to say to you? <laughs> Come on in. Come on in. We've been waiting for you. <laughs> Where have you been? <laughs> what took you so long? Oh, all right. Well, that's it for the questionnaire. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we got to know Jack a little bit different. I, I always have. Uh, I used to do that on 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 my law. I did podcast way back when I lived in Korea. I would do a podcast, and we always did these questions. And uh, pretty neat. It's great ways to start the conversation, get to know each other a little bit better. And uh, you know, we're um, we're real people here on the internet. We're not just uh, bots, handsome faces, right? Right. That's right. I think you can see my like headband. I have a, I wear a headband when I jog, and I think I can see it. It's kind of bugging me. It looks like this white, like clear spot up on my forehead. Anyway, um, try to be as handsome as I can for you guys out there in YouTube world. But this is what you get. You know, you get what you get. That's what right. That mean? You get what you get, and you don't get upset. I've heard little kids say that now. That's like a saying. You get what you get, and you don't get upset. I haven't heard that one. Yeah, but I'll remember it now. Yeah. So, uh, what's new in your world, Jack? You're like the hardest working guy in YouTube. I see you at least twice a week. I don't get to watch the full shows, but um, I usually pop in when I can. Um, you're doing Reading with the Crew, which is now... Um, is it still Reading with the Crew, or is it changed to... No, still still Reading with the Crew. Reading with the uh, Crew, and you guys are focused on the new Witnesses Emerge. Is that right? Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's John Farrak's book. That's one of the chapters in the book. Uh, and, and this is his fifth anniversary edition of The Wrecking fifth Crew. Fifth anniversary edition. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it, he added some uh, chapters to his original uh, book that came out in 2018. Sure. So, so uh, as soon as it came out, uh, Doc had never really got it. And that's where they, you know, been extracting information from. I think we have one more part to this chapter, and then uh, they'll be moving on. I think that's right. I think that's what he's planning on. Excellent, so, excellent. And then you're still doing your weekly um, open mic. Open mic. Sundays? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just you know, for the open mic, it, it, it's always been. I mean, it's not just about old case material. I mean, we've done other things too. You know, we covered sure. the Netflix Coburn K. Uh, I mean, definitely. Coburn v. Netflix and, right. you know, any new readings from Kathleen Zellner. And, and we've covered other cases, too. But, you know, the open mic is a means and a, a vehicle to keep all the information that we have, that we know, out in the public. And right. so, you know, that it, it's, uh, you know, it. I understood a long time ago that this was going to take some time. Uh, I mean, short of a some massive breakthrough that I didn't sure. figure would come because it's, right. they've held on to it for so long, this, these convictions. I knew it was going to take some time. So, you know, keeping that com that part of the conversation alive is just uh, it's just a, an ends to a, a means to an end. Absolutely, absolutely. And when what year did uh, Ma'am come out again? It came Sorry, out in Dece December of 2015. 2015 yeah, yeah. So, we're so this going is on year year nine nine we're going on oof it will be nine full years at the end of the year so that's right oof. yeah and then you uh you started out in in reddit for the first what year or so yeah pretty much reddit some facebook i mean there was a lot of turmoil a lot of turmoil i mean there's a lot of turmoil on reddit too but mm -hmm. you there's there some limitations on reddit that you don't really face too m as much on uh, Facebook. Sure. But there was a lot of turmoil there too. I really wasn't on Twitter as much or really wasn't nearly as much about the case at that time on Twitter. Um, I, I didn't really get involved in any at video, audio, anything like that until uh, the first Mammothon. Which is crazy, but you think about, but you know, with Eric Cozy and, um, uh, uh, in that, that whole thing. Uh, but you know, it, it kind of ignited a, a really good thing, you know, to get case information out there. A lot of people talk about it, no matter which side of the fence you're standing on, or even if you're just standing on the fence. So, right. 
and I think it's fair, you know, um, we did this series uh, discussing a murder. I was on your open mics for uh, quite a while before that. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I my own personal um, position has not really changed since I watched Making a Murder. And um, after I watched Making a Murder, I was always indifferent. I said, I don't know. I can't say for, I don't have enough. I think that was I don't have enough information. But I can tell you one thing, that guy did not deserve, a, he did not receive a fair trial and everybody deserves a fair trial or, or, or what does our justice system mean? If anybody can be railroaded, then everybody can be railroaded. And that's right. Everyone deserves a fair trial. That's why, that's why we, um, that's why we even provide the obviously guilty people with public defenders and that's why we allow them to have strong defense attorneys and if the court does not and the prosecutors did not have their ducks in a row then the guilty man walks and i'm sorry that it has to be that way um but that's the way it should be and so i've never really of all the information we've been through jack over the years looking at pictures reviewing documents going through all of all of the, the testimony, reading <laughs> everything of the backstory of Stephen Avery. I have never deviated from that point. And I think if, if people came away with something different from discussing a murder, I don't think that they were really listening to me. <laughs> and that is, the guy didn't receive a fair trial. And that's where I've always been. And I haven't moved since then. I think, you know, and maybe we can get into a little bit, you know, about where the case is right now. If you want to give me a little update, I've been, you know, as I said, I'm interested in the case, you know, and when I, when I kind of left and did some other stuff, it's not that I don't have interest in it. It's just, it's overwhelming. And unless you're willing to kind of dedicate multiple hours a week to it, it's easy to just kind of drift away. So, yeah, sure. Yeah, to get lost in it. And uh, so where are we? I was just, I just did a quick Google search of Stephen Avery. And it says that um, the, uh, Wisconsin requests the Supreme Court reject Stephen Avery's last appeal. So the state is now appealed to the, you want to give me a little update of where we are? Well, yeah, first, before I do that, uh, just from what you said there, uh, talking about the case, I mean, just for me, looking at it it's not only the trial but it's everything that leads it feeds that trial which is the investigation and the pre-trial sure that's the driver and you know uh, i know every investigation is different but to me studying this investigation versus others that i've looked at and you know, we could look at many cases even right now i'm just saying in comparison to the right. efforts that law enforcement have taken and questions I mean, serious questions answered. We're we're left with no answers still. You know, after this many years, Th that fed into uh, the pretrial and then of course the trial for both of uh, Stephen and Brendan. And this is to me was the huge failing of the case. The investigation was horrible. The way I mean, to me it was. Uh, I know we all again we di we differ in our how we see things should be done. I'm just I just go back to this saying that from one of my favorite TV shows, cop TV shows called Bosch, we all count or none of us do. And he's okay. a detective. He's a detective, senior detective in uh, Orange County in Los Angeles in, in that series. And when he's, uh, you know, he's dealt with the scum and he's dealt with people that were innocent. And his saying is we all count or some of us or, or none of us do. Right. And that, that, that has to hold true. And it, and, and it oftentimes does not, and it, it, it needs to be fixed. But anyway, so to understand kind of where we are right now, of course, uh, Zellner filed her brief. Judge Angie said, eh. and, and, and in this process of Judge Angie denying uh, her appeal, her brief, you know, for uh, a new hear for hearing, blah, blah, blah. She brought in Brendan. She set the bar so extremely high that it would be virtually impossible for anyone to reach it. 
I mean, she she listed off a number of things in there that I just don't see how anybody could ever ever meet that burden. But not only that, bringing Brendan's confession into as part of her order and decision and order. Well, you know, she ended up stepping away from the case. She handed that case off to another judge. I don't know if you do you remember that. I did hear that. I don't know who the judge is. Who is this judge? What do yeah, you know he's about? a new judge. He, I, I don't, I don't know anything. As far as I know, he's a, he's a new judge. Um, that's taken on this case, which is a little shocking to me, given the uh, complexity of this case. Uh, so, so there's that. Well, here several weeks ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Kathleen, of course, appealed her decision to the Court of Appeals. So then here about, I don't know, a month ago, several weeks ago, whatever, uh, Kathleen put in a new motion to the circuit court for new testing of the RAB. She didn't get, she didn't go to the Court of Appeals and say, hey, I want to remand, I want to hold and remand back to the circuit court to have this testing done. She went straight to the circuit court, which, you know, we were all like, wait, what? <laughs> Why did you do that? And of course, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of turmoil on uh, all the platforms. But she she really should have remanded first, and right. uh, and to, to make this move. Uh, and she didn't. But she uh, I guess a couple of days later she did do that, and they the court of appeals denied her re- remanding back to the court of appeals to do this testing. Well, in the so, meantime, after go ahead. Where where are we with that testing then? We're nowhere. It's not nothing's going to happen right now. Nothing that can't happen okay. until, until later. they've ruled. Right. And then it's so, like starting from scratch, starting all over from the bottom. Well, well, depending on what they rule, you know. Um, but nonetheless, after this happened, the state uh, filed and want, wants the court of appeals to throw out her her appeal. That's what you read there a minute ago. But I, I doubt that I don't, they've not made it. I don't think they're, I don't think they'll do that. But so that's, that's kind of where we are. It really kind of became kind of a mess. I, I'm not entirely sure why she did that with uh, asking for that testing while she already had the, the case sitting at the Court of Appeals without asking for the remand first to do the testing on the RAV uh, for touch DNA and, you know, what were the there, items there were that she was she was uh, interested in testing? Do you have, do you know offhand? I read them. Uh, I, I forgot what they were all. I know the seat the seats. Um, I, I I can't think of what all it was, but it's several okay. different things, specifically related to the RAV. Right. So, and her but, logic was that I think I remember reading that. Uh, recently money had been donated and they then had the funds to request it was that part of the reason that's right yeah that's right right privately privately raised funds had made that an option and it, that, that had just recently happened is the reason she did that well but and uh, she should put out a list of how much she needs for what she wants and then maybe <laughs> anyway yeah that, that's true I want anyway, that, that, to cross this kind of, community. It, let's try to reach this, you know. Right. But uh, anyway, that's kind of where the case is right now. I mean, it's going to be a it's going to be a process waiting for uh, the court of appeals. It always is, you know. We're looking right. at several months, I'm sure. And when so, is that? When is that set to to be ruled on? I have no idea. And it, okay. it could be it could be a few months. It could be it could be a year. They, they're not under any specific timetable. Interesting. So. Huh. And uh, what Stevens about what sixty one now? Uh, yeah, sixty two. I think he's a year younger than me. I'll be, I'll be sixty three this year. So he'll be sixty two this year. Sixty two. Yep, and Alan has got to be, you know, uh, he's probably getting pushing ninety. Wow. Yep. I mean, yeah. Chuck and Earl are not getting. I mean, Earl's several years younger, but Chuck's older than you know Stephen. 
Right. You know, there's rumors that the rumors that the the yard is being sold. Uh-huh. I don't know that for I don't know that to be true. I haven't heard that from anybody official. That the, well, the, you know, the, I think you can go on. I mean, it, when things are sold, it's public record. If things are sold privately, you'll never know about it until it's done. But if you put it up for sale, generally that'll that would hit Zillow or you know another site, right? You'd be able to find the what is the, the call number? I forget what they what they call that. The they have an abbreviation for it. The, right. The tax map key number or whatever, but. Um, if it's through a private sale and then you wouldn't know till after, but if it, well, if the it, property it being, is up for sale, it would come up on Zillow. You know what I mean? So, well, I mean, you know, considering it's uh, a junkyard that's been there for many years, there, there could be environmental issues that have to be dealt with first. Absolutely. So yeah. I don't know if that's a that, process. Yeah. I don't know if that's a part of the, you know, what's going on. I, I really don't know. So, but, uh, you know, beyond that, of course, is uh, the, the continuing process of trying to get open records. And it, it's become, it, it's really just a joke now because, uh, you know, I know I'm not the only one with facing issues with this, but it, right. it's become, I, I, I mean, I put in a request uh, in March of last year for uh, more jail phone calls of Avery that I know that they ne- they didn't give us originally. And that's specifically for February and March of 2007. And that's when the trial happened. Uh-huh. We, just, we still don't have a single call for February of 2007. And this, you know, Stephen generally made 40 to 50 calls a month, sometimes more. But typically, you could count on 40 to 50 calls per month from Stephen to you know, his mom or what, whoever. We have zero for February 2007, none. And I know he, I know he used the phone. And then uh, for March, uh, we had two phone calls. After waiting 11 months, I got one call. <laughs> huh. I know there's more. I know there's more. So I'm, I'm still waiting on a reply for the rest of the calls. Or you deny me, or you deny me my request, and you tell me why you're denying my request. And if it's a technical issue, that's their problem. I, I don't have anything to do with that. You, they need to get people in to help them take care of their technical issues. It's also become a problem with the DOJ. I've got one request in that's, um, well, it was August of 2022. I still don't have it. I have two requests in from last year. One of them's a year old, and another one's almost a year. I haven't heard anything. Nothing. It's like a... It's like, okay, we're, we're just not going to reply to you. Therefore, you'll just go away. I guess. I, I don't really know. I can't get anybody to say anything. Well, that's become a problem. I was just on Zillow, just poking around and... Uh, you not say anything? Uh, they have... They have uh, Chuck's house is appraised at 139,000, but it's off the market. Uh, Barbara's old house appraised at 176, but it's off the market. That's interesting. Steven's old uh, trailer and lot is off the market, appraised at 59.5. But then well, that I belonged saw to, that, that, that belonged to Ra- that, that, be- that belonged to Raleigh. Right, but then it says it's sold. This whole this home is not currently listed. Um, huh. Off the market, but there's a sold yellow, but it doesn't it doesn't give me any more information. So I mean, you can always dig that up through the the county. If it was sold recently, that would be uh, county record, public record, county sure. Records, yeah, absolutely. So, um, well, maybe I do have that right here. Bought by Joel Moose. Uh, Stevens property? Hope property? I can share my screen here. Do the old... Oh, share screen the... share. See what we got here. want to present. Share the screen. What do we got? Just a little... 
Is that his address? 12932? So if you look on the map here, uh, we'll back up. Uh, we'll go here. We'll check this out here. So this is the map I was using here on Zillow. We got Chuck's 139,000. This is not, I mean, there's no, I don't see even an appraisal for the property for the salvage yard. There's no number right. that comes up, but here's 176 for Barbara's old place. And that is off the market. You can see here off market. And then this one is the trailer. And then it looks like a little bit of, I guess they don't really have a, but that's, that's his property. I mean, this is the, I'm not, oh, get off yeah. there. Yeah. This one, 60,000. So if we go to that and then we look at home details, it's listed by Joel Moose. You could call that a number if you're interested. Here's the MLS. Last check two hours ago, listed, updated, May 5th, 2023. And that was five days ago. Bought by Joel Moose. Whoever Joel Moose is, I'm not trying to get in on your, uh, I'm not trying to broadcast your stuff here, but sir. It's um, public. It's public. So what, what are you going to do? So, yeah. And then you have uh, Barbara's Place, Home Details. You know, Chuck owned it. He took that so over from Barb. It does not show anybody's name on this one. Interesting. Um, it was sold in 2008. And yeah. looks like that might have been Chuck by... Oh, in 2008, bought by the family or something. Hard to know. But it has no name on that one. But whoever Joel Moose is, um, it seems as though he's not Rolly Johnson. But Rolly Johnson was old in 2006. I don't. I would. I'd find it hard pressed to believe that he might still be around, right? I would be. I would be. I would be shocked. He'd, he'd yeah. be. He'd be pretty really old. And if not, you know, he could. So anyway. Um, it doesn't say, but it was listed, and then now it's off the market. Well, that tells me it's very likely sold to that guy. 6000 although it is uh, appraised at 60000 Interesting. I've been on Zillow lately. It's kind of like once you start looking at properties, it can become addictive to kind of like They're – very check out like what stuff's worth and you know should i sell my house and get something different or you know so um there we go it's actually so where, it's actually where we found the house we moved into you know when we, when we moved in december of uh 2022 we found it on zillow here yeah. locally yeah it's a good uh there's other sites too but zillow seems to be the most popular one at this time so anyway i guess we contributed something new today by digging that up but you can also go to the county tax land key website those are um you know it's all public record whenever you purchase something like that so it's not a secret you can't hide it no um but i don't let's see who let's just see who it comes up who owns real quick just looking you don't see any name uh, for the property known as Chuck's old house. And that's interesting. This property is not currently for sale. The description and property data below may have been provided by a third party, the homeowner or public records. Um, so yeah, nothing, no, no new info on that. Um, there you go. 139,000. I think it's a little little high for me. I would be a little hard pressed to give that. But I'm not a real estate agent, so what do I know? Anyway. Um, yeah, so interesting to see. Um, you know, I would have thought for preservation of potential evidence, somebody would have wanted 
to buy that and just let it sit. But um, I don't know. Yeah, there is that end of it, but I, I don't know. Maybe the, I guess if you've been through there and Zellner's been through there and she had people go through there and she's like, there's nothing here to, you know, the lack of evidence isn't evidence, right? Well, not according to that gown convicting a murderer. <laughs> he said just the opposite. <laughs> oh, that's a whole nother, uh, that's a whole nother can of worms that I, uh, yeah, you know, and, you know, speaking of, you know, convicting a murderer, they went all around and around and tried to, you know, use circumstantial evidence to try to prove something and using false negatives and using anecdotal evidence as real evidence. And then I still go back to what I had said to you before, and that is, yeah, okay, but the guy didn't reserve, didn't receive a fair trial. And if you don't understand that, if you don't understand our basic, the basic tenets of our justice system, then you're just making hay. Then yes. you could memorize, you could memorize every detail of the case. You could know where every file is, where every document is, where every picture is. But if you don't understand that people deserve fair trials and it's not just, well, I believe I believe he's guilty. I think he's guilty. So then I'm, oh, you know, to hell with it. But you just you you it's you know, it's uh, cognitive dissonance to just say, oh. Well, I think he's guilty, so then I'm just going to find information that backs up my theory. That's not science. That's not the scientific process, by the way. You collect evidence and you make a determination. Not, I start with what I want it to be, and then I only look at evidence that backs up my theory, right? Right. And if you don't understand, like so many people who got caught for, like by the big hook of convicting a murderer, many of them were, our, you know, we knew, and, uh, you know, they defected, essentially defected. Sure. You're a fucking word I ever said, Jack. You know what I mean? Sorry to like to be like that, and you know, but I've never moved from that position. The guy didn't receive a fair trial, and tell you he deserves a fair trial. Put all the cards on the table, let it fall where it may, and you know, and that's how it should be. And to just say, well, uh, I, I I made a new opinion. Well, okay, make an opinion, but you're still you're still missing the fact, the entire point of the justice system, and that is that everybody receives a fair trial, not guilty, guilty or otherwise. And if you can't understand that, then you don't, and you don't really have any business in the true crime world. Sorry to be like that. Sorry to be blunt, but if you don't understand the basics of the justice system then go kick rocks go play baseball go get into a sport because this is one this isn't for you then this isn't no. your bag if you know that's right you, you that's exactly right and and that herein lies the problem because you know uh, in a nutshell for convicting uh, you know unfortunately it didn't end up in the vein of what Sean Reck advertised that it was going to be a fair and unbiased look at it, it didn't it was completely biased and, and that hey it's it's their dime do whatever at the same time you know judging someone on character I, I knew care I knew Stephen was a dick long long time ago and anyone that has done any research at all and I'm not talking about a deep diver like me and many others I'm talking about just a a medium amount of research, you'd find that out really quickly. He could be a complete dick, and he was. That doesn't make him. That doesn't mean he killed someone. And that this connecting the dots that they really stretched to do throughout basically every episode. Uh, you know, having people on that clearly had an axe to ground with Stephen. You know, right. it just blew me away. To me, the rewatchability of that series is zero. It's actually you'd have to pay me to watch it again. You literally yeah. would have to pay me. It's it's, it's so it's bad. bad. It is pretty yeah. bad. It's uh, well, here's an opinion of someone who has, like you said, an axe to grind with Steven. You're at you're you know, I think the stuff with Earl was really just 
really like really abusive to anybody who put their eyeballs to it because here's you know go look at the record earl has a past of sexual misconduct leading all the way up to the time they probably even when they were filming but now he's issues. gonna tell you about how steven is the one who we has the real <laughs> sexual miscon you know what i mean I, I, it's like whoa buddy <laughs> Another thing that he did, that uh, another story that he sold several, but he talked about Stephen. I'm I'm guessing he was talking about Bear chaining him to the car and dragging him down the road. If that really happened, why aren't you calling the cops and taking that damn dog to the vet instead of sitting here talking about it years later? Like, you know, I'm I'm you know I'm standing over here. I'm not involved, but you're here. You are talking to you know thousands and thousands of people about this horrible story well, what about your story why didn't you get involved if that's actually actually happened and i don't believe it hey i'm not saying it, it couldn't have happened it could have but I, I don't believe it i don't believe it yeah. there are other things too that, that so many things that got said that 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 really they pulled this trick on people um tying things that steven did when he was young Again, being an asshole to what right. supposedly happened in 2005. It's not the same. It's just not. So, you know, and people in charge of it, getting off of that for a moment, but talking about people, our, embed, our, our process, our criminal justice system, and I've said this for years now, and it's probably more true now than because I really, really understand it now. The criminal justice system is only as good as the people running it at the time. That's right. It's, you know, it's a human. It's, we're not there yet with artificial intelligence quite yet. <laughs> Humans are still responsible. And, uh, that's right. You know, I, there is one thing that, um, I think because we live in an age of criticism of everything, movies, TV, education, you name it, you yep. name it there's a critic for it. We've critiqued ourselves into a corner where we only ex we expect perfection from everything. That's and right. I'm not trying to defend the mistakes that are made in the justice system. I think we have to continue to fight and continue awareness to bring awareness for the, you know, for better and better methods. One of them is removing evidence collection from law enforcement and having a third independent party collect evidence. It doesn't have there's a lot of things we can do to make make it better i know throwing money isn't the answer to all of our problems but a lot of a lot of prosecutors are underfunded so they're not able to collect what they need they're not able to go to that that length but like you said it is a human endeavor and as long as there's the human factor there's always going to be that greed revenge yep. getting even whatever you want to call it or just frankly you know the people at the daily wire i think he's guilty therefore let's make a documentary that backs up what i think and and as long as we have you know um a human system like that and i'm not saying that we should hand it over to the computers or ai um you know that's yet to be seen what we what we could do um you know with artificial intelligence and but we're always going to have that I, you know the goal is to minimize that um i see this case as a prime example of look what can be done when people look the other way when law enforcement toes the line and says you know like uh we you know that that phone call do we have him in yeah. custody yet do we have a yep. body? Yet? We yep. know he's guilty before we've even arrested him. Yep. That's right. That's not how we should be operating. You know what I mean? And, and having the, the preconceived notion, you know, like you said, all the stuff that happened pre-trial, you know, all of the shenanigans, the people that shouldn't have been there. I mean, right away, I think any, any reasonable judge should have almost thrown the case out before it even became a case because you're like you guys weren't supposed to be there you said you weren't going to be there and then you were there where is the you know where is the who's been held accountable for that nobody 
So well, that's you, that's the other part about it, the unaccountability. Right. Know. And laws without accountability are just words on paper, which I've said many times before. That's right. A policy, a policy at a, at a police department that has no accountability is just words on paper. It's lip service. It's well, you know, it's just something that we can say when anyone calls us on it and say, "Well, your your police department really f this one up." Well, our policy says X Y Z. Well, your policy without any teeth, without any repercussion, without any accountability, it's worthless. It's Who worthless. Gets a policy. A policy is right. it's bullshit unless you can actually, you know, this guy lost his job and he'll never be a cop again because of what he did. But n- not in our system, not in our no. human system where this cop screws up majorly, gets a slap on the wrist, maybe a $5,000 fine, takes a year off, goes to the neighboring police department and then just starts back up again. No problem. Yeah, you know, you know that's, that. That's the that's frustrating the, part. It's very frustrating. But I'll tell you a short story. Off, I, I promise I'll keep it brief. And this goes back to Reddit, and this is more recent. I, I'm not on Reddit nearly as much as I used to be. And, okay. But someone made a post. Um, gosh, I want to say probably a month or five weeks ago now. Anyway, this post is talking about. Um, Manitowoc and Calumet and, you know, somebody and then somebody else brought up about um, their involvement and, and all that and specifically about certain officers. And I just pointed out specifically the actions of I just I think I think I brought up a couple, which was um, Sergeant Jason Yost. He's the one who allegedly found this bone out, see, out eight feet south of the burn pit. And then that was on the eighth. And then on the seventh was uh, MT, both MTSO officers, uh, David Siders, that found the electronics in, the, in Stevens' burn barrel. That was on the 7th. Both of them did not have a minder with them. They were right. alone. And I, I just pointed out what was... Yeah, you're blurry. You, did you do that yeah. on purpose? Okay. No. Oh, yeah, your macro's messed up or something. I don't know. Let's turn it off for a while. Maybe. Anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, the internet's yeah. sick of looking at my face. They're giving me <laughs> no, a no, 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 no. <laughs> but anyway, I just stated the obvious as what's in the case file and so forth. And my opinion is MTSO should not have been involved because of that lawsuit. You know, and in, had in, go ahead. A third party had a third party been there, and this is something that you know. Um, a lot of advocates have been asking for and in a lot of jurisdictions is true cops don't collect evidence lab techs collect evidence That's right? right had that been the case there you wouldn't have people like me and jack and others you know in foul play and, and other groups saying saying foul play excuse the pun but screaming foul play because you would have had that system and you'd say hey man this guy's a third party they don't even know these people they're from 200 miles away they're not related they've never worked together they have no horse in the race they're not paid by they're not paid directly by the justice you know department they have no connection to these people they don't know these people that's right then i would say well you know yeah there was a manitowoc officer there but they also had the lab tech you know hip to hip going through every you know going through everything or maybe there were no manitowoc officers there at all and i'm not you know take a step back different cases not even this case don't you want an impartial evidence collection team i mean look what we saw in that case in, in that case in kenosha where that guy gets pulled over He's he gets pulled over and the cop searches car and you can see on the body cam footage the cop takes a bag of weed out of his pocket and throws it on the back seat and goes hey what's this <laughs> yeah what's this here <laughs> you think it doesn't happen you're naive 
If you think, you know what I mean? It, like if you think right. that this stuff didn't happen, you're naive and you don't get yep. it. And I'm sorry to be harsh, but you need to wake up to the facts, you know, and uh you see to me uh, when something like that happens, that that dirty cop hurts all the honest ones. I mean, desperately right. hurts them. Not just Absolutely. because trust is a very is a very tenuous thing to me, especially in positions of power. Or somebody got a gun and a badge and they can arrest your ass. That's a right. very so to me that cop should that dishonest cop should never be allowed to hold a law enforcement position ever again. Period. Right. I don't care. Nothing. I don't care what it is. Nothing, Nothing. involved in law enforcement. You know, go get a factory get job. Sorry. Right. You have ruined you know, it. You know, you spent two years of your life going to community college or whatever to get your your law enforcement degree in criminal justice, which, by the way, we don't require enough training in this country. And I know that there's issues about, well, we don't want to strap all these people with student loan debt, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, in other countries, in most of Europe, you have to get a four year degree. You have to take it seriously. And the more training that you put in is the more important it is that you do it right because you don't want to screw it up. That's you know, right. you're, you're, you're invested in it. You're invested in it, right? If, if you can just go to school for two years and go, oh, well, you know, I got, I guess I can go get a journeyman's job working construction and I'm not really out but two years. Well, if you're, if you're four years, six years deep and you're a professional and you're required to continue your training on a regular basis and yep. you have a leg in the race of criminal justice and maybe maybe you get a better position later like people care more they're they're more invested and i you know i kind of wish we could talk to sapper cop right now i wish you could pipe him in maybe i'll get him in and on an interview and talk to him but oh um, he definitely you know, will tell you he was he was uh this I don't know, unhappy with how things were unfolding. Let's just put it that way. I don't want to put words in his mouth or speak for him, but um, yeah, I would like to pick his brain about, about that. And uh, I don't know. So that's just another area where it's like, if there's, if we don't have the investment of the people and there's no teeth in the policy, I should look and see what happened to that guy in Kenosha that planted that, uh, planted that drug, uh, well, and just to, the pot, do that. Mar- marijuana. Well, you know, just to finish up my little Reddit story. Anyway, yeah, this guy, I, I think I've even got a reply from him again. He's arguing with me. He says, "Well, Manitowoc didn't have to turn that case over." Well, no, they didn't have to do it, but they're having their pants sued off by Stephen Avery if they hadn't done it. You know how that would have looked. And they would have not been able to survive it. It would have looked horrible them investigating him and his family while he's got this massive lawsuit on them. So they knew they had to dump it. Now, in Wisconsin, I'm sure other states have the same thing. They have what's called mutual aid between counties and so forth, where one county can ask another one to help them out with the case, which, of course, we know that's what happened. But Calumet did not have to ask Manitowoc for mutual aid. They could have taken that to one of the other surrounding counties, or, as the, uh, which they did, the DCI was called in. They could have got the state police involved. They could have also asked for federal help. The FBI would have definitely would have would have helped them. That didn't happen either. One final thing I'll say beyond that and what you were just talking about a minute ago about professionalism, and it's not just in police work because we talk about forensics and lab techs. And this is, again, a position of utmost trust. Utmost trust. Because they can affect a case from one end to the other. And I think that I think that definitely happened in this case. So, you know, you get caught. I mean, there, there's, there can be, there's been penalties for some people. That, you know, you, you got the how to, how to fix a drug scandal. That was a huge Netflix hit. Oh, yeah, really and good one. And it was m- massive massive amount of cases that were affected by by the actions of these lab techs is crazy of how quickly they can just like that so that's another area that's tied to our criminal justice system it's like well they're kind of not yeah they really are now even more today than when these cases occurred they're tied at the hip it's, it's unbelievable you know 
it's this is so disheartening when you start looking into stuff and maybe that's why i needed a break i just google searched kenosha cop plants drugs and another story came up of a kenosha cop planting evidence <laughs> this time in a murder case you'll never guess what he planted oh uh, my god no in a murder case guess what he planted just Hello. see what I'm uh, i'm gonna send you mind bullets over to you, Jack, and see if you can pick up my mind bullets. Guess what he planted in a murder well, case? Shell casings or a bullet fragment or a gun? A bullet. A bullet. He planted oh a bullet. God. Wow. He planted a bullet in a murder case. Guess how much time he received for this uh, violation of policy and law. Guess how much what he received as punishment. Two years, maybe? Probation. A year oh, of probation. Oh, well, okay then. That's okay. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is injustice. We. This is the kind of stuff that makes my blood boil. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that if you plant evidence in a murder trial, you should be charged with the murder, but it should be something more than probation. A year of probation. No, you're barred. Number one, you're barred from serving in law enforcement, law enforcement position forever. Right. Number two, I you're mean, going to jail. You're going to jail. I think a minimum thing. of five years, minimum. You, you plan evidence to convict someone? If you can get away with this, what's stopping you from doing it and just being, well, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the justice. I am justice. Well, in a sense, that's what they're doing. If you, in a real if, sense. If this is the one he got caught on? How many times did he do it before? Right. Every case he's had his hands in, he ha has to be investigated. That's the failing. So, because there's no reper there's no or little repercussions to someone doing that. You just said it. He gets he gets probation for however long. I don't care if it's for five years or ten years. You know, it doesn't matter. It's it's just unbelievable. But I was looking for another. I was looking for another case, and I stumbled on. Let me see if I can find that one where he throws. He throws the. Uh, oh yeah, there it is. I'll bring up my uh, share my screen here. Another Wisconsin case. This is the. Is it Caledonia? Yeah, this is Wisconsin, I believe. Um. I've heard of that, but I can't place you it. You can double check Caledonia. I can double. I'm, I thought it was Kenosha, but maybe I could be wrong. We can double check. But anyway, here's the video. Can you see that? Oh, no. How about now? Can you see that, Jack? I can now. Okay, so it's in slow. Got the TMZ. And whoop. Did you see it? Do it again. Here you go. Whoop. Oh, wow. Wow. Whoop. What's that? Yeah, what's that back there? What's what are you doing with this weed? Ben put his gloves on. I'm just going to do a search now. And I think you can hear that. Yeah, there it is. What's that? Got some weed back here, dude. What's going on with that? Whoop. Got to take you in. That's where crazy. Did he learn that? You know, where did he learn that? Who showed him how to do that? Where did he pick that up from? Yep. And how can he be so brazen? You know, I mean, thank thank God for more body cams and dash cams. And, you know, I've, I've said this before about uh, the Stephen Avery case, but shit. If we all had ring doorbell cameras, we'd know where Teresa Holbach's Rev 4 went. You know what yep, I mean? That's right. And so, yeah, I, I, I go back to that quote. Um, let me get it so I can get it right. Just want to make sure that I. Uh, the, the, the Carl Sagan quote, the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Uh, no, it's a tale of two cities. Um, the Charles Dickens uh 
book and it opens it was the best of times it was the worst of times and i think i I love this quote because i didn't understand really what it meant and you know maybe my as i get older it changes the meaning kind of changes for what that sure does sure does and uh a lot of people say like oh technology is ruining our society and then some people will say well look at the examples of all the things that's improved look at the dash cam look at the this one i just showed you without this kid having a camera in his pocket he would have he would have went to jail for uh for drugs right and so that's where i go to the quote is the best of times that it was the worst of times because although things might seem negative today we might see that oh you know the, the world is headed in a bad direction or we don't like the way things are going it's still kind of it's still better than ever before. If you look at crime rates, crime statistics without the blurb of even after COVID. I mean, we saw a major increase during COVID of crime and, sure. and uh, of course. but after COVID it dropped off. I mean, we're we're at a 25 40 year low of violent crime. Although it seems like it's never been worse and there's more crime documentaries on TV, it's more it's really reported. Never been safer. We've it's really more reported. Never, yeah, yeah. Right? Well, yeah. I mean, sure, but um, I what I'm saying is, that I'm just saying is that you know, 30 years ago, back in you know, back in the day, as it were, we didn't have all this access to where we could see all these other cases. They still happened. All these other cases were still going on. We sure. just didn't know about it. It wasn't in our face like it is now. It's, it's, yeah, exactly. It's not in our face. So in 2022, the crime rate was 58% lower than in 1979. Yep. Absolutely. But if you ask a lot of us who consume a lot of uh, true crime, it seems like it's never been more dangerous to go outside of your house, right? But the truth is, you know, we're we're seeing lower crime rate. I've seen a couple of really interesting. I don't know how much you've dug into this or or looked into why. Why is the crime rate overall dropping? And there is actually a lead, uh, a lead paint theory. I think it's called. Is it the lead, lead crime theory hypothesis? Have you ever heard of this? I haven't, but I can believe it because of all the so, toxic as- side effects of lead paint. Yeah. That's right. In the 90s, we really started to removing uh, things like leaded gasoline was taken out in the 70s. And then in the 90s, we really removed a lot of from paints. And and so there's a theory. It's a hypothesis. It's not a proven that with the removal of lead paint. Um, I guess I can share my screen because I'm just looking at the uh, I'm just looking at the at the wiki page. So um that the removal of lead paint from products, um, people become less violent. Um, they also well, it, also, it also affects his inte- affects his intelligence as well. That's right. Um, and so um, it's also considered one of the reasons maybe why they had a downfall of of you know Rome. Of uh, the downfall of Rome may have been related to lead in the lead in the water. And so, you know, is it all this massive spending in law enforcement or is it something, you know, related to less lead, less toxins in our in our society in general? Or is it a combination of both? It's probably a combination of multiple things. Right. I think Um, so. And we have more cameras. People are more, you know, more likely to get caught if you try to commit a crime. I mean, I if I walk down my block, which is a rural block. I'd be caught on how many dash court dash, you know, I'm sorry, uh, ring, doorbell ring cameras cam. yeah, and dash and dashboard cams. Like you really can't, I know there's a paranoia out there. If people would say, well, I'm so paranoid. I'm being recorded everywhere I go. And you're like, no, it's probably a good thing that you're being recorded everywhere you go. Cause if you disappear or something happens to you, there's a trail, there's a trail. Right. Um, yeah. and so I think, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. You know what I mean? I think that that quote kind of resonates with me more and more now. Sure. i tell you something else I got into, and this is a little bit off the track, still law enforcement, but uh, sure. I, I got into, and I still do it, but haven't been watching as much, but 
there for a couple of weeks I was watching, uh, and I know you've seen them, these uh, people that get caught drunk driving. Or do you ask, do you ask pullovers? Oh my God. And I know that, you know, they don't, we're, we're seeing, you know, probably, uh, not all of them are, are necessarily shine well for the policemen involved, but most of these that I've watched, the police are very patient. I mean, far beyond what I could be. I can tell you that right now. I mean, if they go to airports and people are, are I mean, some people, I've come to realize, I mean, I've, I've known this for quite a while, that some people should never drink. Alcohol breaks their brain. They become violent. Yeah. They, they're, you know, you you hear growing up, you know, well, he's a happy drunk. Well, he's a mean drunk. You don't really know what that means until you get a little older. Some people just should not drink alcohol at all, ever. And uh, the patience of some of these police officers is above board. I mean, crazy good. I mean, they, they understand you. Know, these people are stupidly drunk, and it's really affecting them in a really negative way. Um, but watching how they conduct themselves, I uh, was really impressed with uh, a lot of them, a lot of their actions. It, it, was, you know, and, um, it was good to see. And there are, there's great law enforcement out there. There, there are, most of them, and, most of them are. You know, but as the as the saying goes, one bad apple. You know, well, ruins the, the the bushel or whatever they say. You know, and the the, the problem being true. that that you know, I'm not going to say every police department, but you know, uh, many police departments, you you have you know the bulk of the officers are are just good, uh, honest working people, but they know that they have a a bad element, but they don't really want to tell on that bad element. They don't have a good way to tell. They don't have a good way to go to their captain or their or their sheriff or, or whoever and say fear of reprisal you, you, right that's right that's exactly right and that is something else that needs to change because it, that bad element it hurts the system i'm sorry and I've, I've invested so much of my last many years of my life into just looking at not only these cases but the system in general i mean i already knew there was a problem before the you know i ever watched making a murder i was already looking at true crime to a degree, but then right. once making a murder hit, it's like holy crap! What's what really happened? What's going on? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it made me dig really deep. You know, it makes it makes me think back to that. You know, uh, Colburn on the stand, and he's his integrity is being questioned, and it's like <laughs> I've never, you know, I, I have never spotted every liar I've ever seen, but. You know, when your hand is caught in the cookie jar and it couldn't be me, me, steal yeah. a cookie? No, right. no, no, no way. I can't believe you'd even think that. I, no one has ever even, look, get, get get over yourself, number one, you know, and uh, I that that stuck out with me watching the Making a Murderer documentary uh, first time around is, you know, growing up in Wisconsin. I knew people like Colburn, and I knew that they lied all the damn time. We had a town cop. He lied all the time. <laughs> he, would, he would make up stories. He would, you know, one of my friend's younger sisters, he would follow her through the neighborhood as she did her paper delivery, and she would get paranoid. She's like, the cop is following me every every house oh, I drop a newspaper te off. Te 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 teenage girl? He's yeah. He's checked. Right. Oh my God, that's so creepy, dude. And it's just like, and you know, and they would just be, they're, you know, they're, they're, instead of like waiting for a call, okay, I got a call, something happened, they're actively trying to force crime, it seems. Like they're trying to, I don't know, um, create a situation. So we had a town cop that, yeah, they're trying to create a situation where they can, oh, Oh, are you resisting now? You know what I mean? Right. I'm going to charge you with resisting. Where there was no crime, you're creating a crime. You know what I mean? That's that's right. And, and I mean, I've just, seen some of those videos too. That's right. That's right. And and you should, I mean, you should follow lawful orders. And, you know, hopefully if they do something wrong, you'd have a, a judge that would identify that. But um, so I kind of knew... I kind of knew Colburn and I know that they're just 
you know, no, no one tells the truth except them. They are, right. they are the arbiters of truth. Everyone else is a suspect. They're always doing something wrong, but not them. You know what I mean? And it, there's just, and there's so many things with that. Like, all right, so Colburn, you, you're there. You're in the scene. Then, not only did you find evidence, but you found some of the most important pieces. Some of the most damning evidence comes directly from man. The bullet, the key. They weren't the found by anybody but Manitowoc officers. The, yeah. And it's just like, huh? Yeah, re really? Yeah. And, <laughs> and people who look at that and go, oh, that's totally above board. Man, I got a bridge to sell you. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I got some... I got some motion front property in Nebraska to talk to him about too. Absolutely. Because you've got to be one of the most gullible people ever. If you don't think that there's funny business. And that's what I'm saying. Like maybe there wasn't funny business, but if you, if you're going to leave yourself open to that, then you leave yourself open to criticism. You know what I mean? If you're going to be in there poking around doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing, then you've opened yourself up to criticism and don't be surprised when people criticize you. Oh, how how could you even think that? It's like give me a break, bro. Just well, give then, me yeah, a break. When 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 the Cohen v. Netflix lawsuit hit, and we really dove off deep into that, and the stuff that came out in that, uh, with the understanding of you know having watched watch or read through all the material that we had, and, and you know what we saw in Making a Murder with the, it, it's like, okay, wait a minute here. <laughs> You know, he's he's blaming the breakup of his marriage on making a murderer, and it had nothing to do with it. Nothing right. at all. It's like, why would you even put that in your lawsuit, man? Are you lying? How would you? Why would you just pile on like that? Right. And then, how do you explain your wife saying, "Why did you think you were going to go to jail?" <laughs> yeah, that too. That was an interesting one. What were you worried the about? Didn't seem to consider that, did they? they no, that. no. You know what I mean? No. I think the funniest thing about convicting a murder in general is their their entire shtick was making a murderer left so much out. Right. And what did they do? They every time there was a piece of evidence that didn't fit their narrative, they conveniently left it out. So it was like, oh, what? what are you, you're doing exactly what you claim the other side is guilty of, and I mean, yeah, it's it's just wild, it, you know, and I feel for the people who, you know, fell for that documentary hook, line and sinker. Um, but at the same time, you have, you know, you have a brain between your ears. Use it, you know, don't fall for nonsense, because, I mean, we can all cherry pick data. We can all, you know, use anecdotal evidence to but that's why anecdotal evidence isn't it's not science you know what i mean and that's why we rely on science forensics to to solve cases and uh or at least we should be i mean i know there have been some that rely a lot on character um assassination and stuff but yeah that that oh, colburn netflix thing was wild that you oh, know it, it, it was could, how could you even think that i would lie well number one you're a human Well, so you think yeah. you're above approach because you have a badge on? And, I, you know, I think that goes back to, you know, kind of what we were talking about earlier. I have a badge. I right. couldn't lie. Uh, yeah, the badge is going to prevent you from doing something that is wrong? No. You're you know, in a position of trust, and then you break the trust, and the, it, it, it's wild. It's. I, I intentionally kind of left this next part out that I'm, I'm going to say because it, it, it's uh, – I guess kind of legal, but not not entirely. But you know, um, I guess he's been back for quite a while, and we we didn't really know. But Ken Kress is apparently back on social media, at least on X. I don't know about Facebook or anywhere else, but well, he's made an appearance back on X, and uh, really surprised me. <laughs> it it kind of it kind of does me. I mean, being gone for basically for five years. Uh, and then making his way back, uh, I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, you Do you know, think he, felt he was really need... gone then? 
You know what I mean? No, I think no, I think he had an all. I think they I think and he had Leah both had all. I think I've commented with Kratz. I've even it's like you know, this is what I've never understood of so called guilters. I've never understood this. If you are so concerned about Stephen Avery's guilt, they won. He's in jail. He's in jail. You won. Right? What are you doing? Well, exactly. What are you, doing? you know what I mean? And I and I and I think I said this on Reddit before. I, you know, I said, you know, Sammy the Bull Gravano killed like twenty people. He's out. He's out of prison. Does that eat you up every day? Do you do you just pound the keyboard? Sammy the Bull Gravano should be behind bars. He killed right. twenty people. This is a fucking outrage. Why are you just why are you just at this Stephen Avery thing? You must right. be you must be somehow t- closely related to the case. I mean, why do you give a shit? Why, you exactly. Want, why are you know? It, it's like there are so many people who are out that the evidence is clear they did it. There was, uh, you know, there's no doubt. But this case, this guy that lives in a that lived in a trailer and an ice shanty. And, you know, someone who's on the edge of society, as they would say, that's your target. Right. That's what exactly. You're up on? Right. But he's locked up. He... From you punch up. You don't punch down. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And so I've never understood, uh, quote unquote, guilters. I don't see the motivation unless they are a Ken Kratz or someone in the department or someone who has an axe to grind or feels like they were wronged that's why i've always suspected that most of the most of the guilters on reddit that have never never done a live never shown their face never you know never come out and said hey this is who i am i'm going to tell you why i think this which i actually what, would have had more respect for that's what makes me say it's probably ken kratz it's probably one of these other cops from manitowoc or you know, a family member of a cop from Manitowoc that somebody you know, was something to lose. Somebody right. was something to lose. Otherwise, what the hell do you care? Like, think like about you know a case like uh, you're just a you know, clown. We take the the I can't remember the name the 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 Valo Daybill the, the the case with the kids. You know, I sure. fully believe she's guilty. Fully believe it, and. I will, you know, unless something pops up in the news, I'm done with it. I won't go back to it. I won't. But there are people out there that, you know, they protest, you know, they, they're they're in that they're in that fight and say, oh no, they're innocent and she's innocent. And I'm like, okay, well, whatever. Good luck, be good luck to you. I'm done. Yeah. There she's she's been found been guilty. She's been served. You know, and I and I'm not in. I don't usually quote Mike Hallbach. He's not someone that I quote a lot. But he said about Brendan. He said, "Well, when Brendan goes up for parole, I'll. I guess I'll have to think about this again." Oh, well, there you go. Right. Exactly. He's like, I won't think about him until that day. He doesn't deserve my. You know, and I, and I think, even though I think that Brendan is innocent. The sentiment that Mike Hallbach said, I'm not going to let this live in my head. I'm not going to let this, you know, on a daily basis, you know, control my destiny. So why would a guilt, why would these guilters do it? You know, why would, that's where the logic doesn't appear. I can see why people, if you think there was an injustice and you can't let go of it, that's compelling. That's a story. But to be like, Stephen Avery is where he belongs behind and then keep you're saying it clown. over and yeah, you're, you're saying clown, it over. Dude. You're adding nothing to the conversation that we didn't already know. You're yeah. not questioning anything. Oh, you you're just made. Yeah. You know, Get it out and, to. And, yeah. Show your face. Be who, you know, say what you want to say. But otherwise, I'm just assuming they're all like Ken Kratz and they're just like Ken Kratz's girlfriend. And you're, you're all, you're all just a joke. You, you're not, yeah, you're not adding anything to it you know go find another case um that someone you really believe it has has guilty and that there's evidence out there that they could be you know imagine if they used all their time instead of typing 
Stephen Avery's where he belongs, blah, blah, blah. If they use that energy to go after someone in another case where there's actually evidence that they could find that would lock someone up. Yeah. There you wow, go. There you go. Like, yeah. Respect. There you go. Just pounding on the keyboard about how, you, you know, it's like spiking in the football. I, I think I've said that many times before. If you're just going to spike the football. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> I think well, you know, you have to do a penalty now. Are you even allowed to spike the football anymore? I don't think so. I don't think so. No, I don't no. think you are. But, uh, you know, to add a little bit more to this conversation, you, you know who New Scott is, right? Allegedly a show. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess Kratz contacted him. There's more of that story, but that's okay. for another time. Well, but Kratz, you're welcome to join us here on <laughs> But uh, he he uh, uh, Scott agreed to do this Q and A thing uh, several days ago w- between people sending questions for Ken Kratz to answer. Kratz will okay. send back the answer. Scott will make a little video about it. Okay. And I guess that was, this was going to be a multi part thing, but I mean, you know, it 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 is time consuming. I mean, I'm sure it's time consuming. I'm sure he got a lot of questions, and you know, it takes time to you know filter through and blah blah blah. And anyway. I guess yesterday or day before, uh, Scott had, I guess there was an opportunity that landed in his lap. He did a couple, of, I think he did one video with a Q&A, but something landed in his lap and he just, uh, he's not going to be able to devote the time to us. So I guess the Q&A is off. Oh, darn. You know, yeah. I feel sorry for Ken Kratz because uh, he has no life, well, obviously. Well, he, he, has a YouTube, he has a YouTube channel. I mean, right? They're free. They're free. You don't Absolutely. need a license. You don't need a. Nope. You don't need to be on the bar. Just to, a Gmail. Uh, right. Just a Gmail so, account. You know, I don't really feel sorry for Ken Kratz. Um, I was joking, but it's obvious he doesn't have anything else. Well, no, of course He's not. Never well, you know, been able to do anything. He's just stuck. Just stuck in this case. So in a way, like we go back to other guilters. Ken, if you think you serve justice, then why are you still caught up in this case? Which makes me just go, because you're worried you're, something's going to come out that's going to implicate you or someone else that you're right. involved with. Like, why would, you know, how many prosecutors are out there? They win a murder trial, and then, of course, many write books. But then they move on with their life. Yep. Next case. Next, next case. Next step in their career, whatever it could be. That didn't happen. Did not. No, it. It. You know, we've had that discussion too, and I. I mean, not knowing, you know, we get snapshots of time, you know, from 2007 and onwards. But, you know, to me, the given his victories at that time. I would have expected to see his political career or at minimum, you know, to him to stay in that position if that's what he wanted. Or that's get a not better what we saw. Move to Green well, Bay, move to Milwaukee, yeah. uh, move yep. out of state, get a, you know, I could like, I'm actually with the way a lot of, you know, there is, there's a problem that we have in the justice system and in, in a lot of other areas of society where people fail up. Yeah. You're not good at your job, but you you get rewarded anyway, you know, yep. you're, you're the villain of, of this, let's just say you know, he was the villain of making one of the villains of making a murderer. I could have easily seen him fail up, right? Oh, well, I don't, I think he did a good job. And so we're going to hire him, right? It exactly. is kind of interesting to see why his, his career just fell off. Like, I think he became obsessed. I think he doesn't, I mean, last we saw what was he was living in Fond du Lac, my old stomping grounds. Yep. Um, he had lived out of state, but he just can't seem to get away. Just can't get away from uh, Wisconsin. Can't get away from the area. And yeah, uh, I'm not entirely sure where they're. They may. I'm not entirely sure where they're at, um, but I'm pretty sure it's in. I'm pretty sure it's in Wisconsin, but I don't know that for a fact. We well, had done that interview, and the interview was in Fond du Lac, and I'm like, why would you do it in Fond du Lac? Oh, that's right. He gave those two interviews to the Wisconsin, right? 
Why would you do it in Milwaukee? Because it was the Milwaukee uh, Law Review, right? Uh, was kind of, uh, law Review, which was out in Milwaukee or Madison, even if I'm wrong. Yeah, the yeah that so law journal thing. Why did you meet thing. them in Fond du Lac? Why not meet him in, if you're going to meet him anywhere? Like, wouldn't you meet in your own? You know, meet him in Manitowoc or Calumet County? No, Fond du Lac, right. right? Which is you know the next county over where I'm from. So why would you meet him there if you weren't living there? So that's why I just exactly. assumed he's living in Fond du Lac. Uh, yeah, and you very well could be right, and that makes Can sense. Comment in if you want. Let me know. Maybe you're not in Fond du Lac. If so, go to Gillies. Gillies has a really good drive in there yet, if it's still around. Um, it was there when I was there. I think you can get your Christmas tree in the off season. They open up in the summertime and they have some great burgers and uh, Wait. ice cream cone for you. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, there's one more part of that story uh, of him coming back as well. And I, I guess you've seen this maybe on, on, on X uh, about his diary. No, but I'd love to hear spill the tea, as the kids say. Give me the tea. Well, apparently, according to what Crass is saying, he wrote this diary back during the trial. Now, the Wisconsin uh, Law Journal posted a couple of excerpts, and he got really pissed off about it. But uh, oh. he, they they posted a, yeah they posted a couple of excerpts, and those excerpts don't really read as though it was written and during the trial I, hey look i'm not saying it wasn't i'm just saying that you just have to read it uh, the it's not much it's, it's not a lot but apparently um they they posted a couple of snips from it and he got really upset and they did a retraction and then they posted they reposted the, they reposted it <laughs> so i don't know what's going on with that well anyway somehow I guess John Frack got a copy of this diary. Now, supposedly, Kratz only gave it to the Wisconsin, this this guy at the Wisconsin Law Journal. Somehow, Frack got a copy of it and posted it on, you know, he works for the Patch there in uh, whatever, in Illinois. Right. And uh, <laughs> so he posted uh, some excerpts, I guess. And anyway, they ended up taking it down apologize and everything i'm not sure exactly how Farrak got it um which begs the question how's it he got it if the wisconsin law journal is the only ones that had it i, I haven't worked that one out yet huh. so there's been some fl flubub over that trial diary there you go i don't know if you look at if you look at some of the things that are written in there he he mentions his wife that was at the time and he mentions her name instead of just saying my wife. Why would you do uh -huh. that? <laughs> I mean, he's yeah, married no. again, obviously. But you just you, have to read it to, to pick up a couple things. Yeah, I'd have to go and, and look for that one. But, you know, as I said, uh, it doesn't look like he has anything else in his life. Uh, and I think he peaked, you know, he peaked at, at the, the Stephen Avery case. And he, oh, the scandal. you know, it's funny because he said before, you know, I think it came out in, in convicting a murder. He goes, well, I don't have the case file. You know, if you ask him a hard question, he knows everything about Stephen Avery's oh, guilt. That was like when that in, that was that in, that was in that interview with that ABC reporter, and he's talking about fingerprints and all that, and he's like, "Well, I don't have the case file right now." Yeah, yeah I don't. You know, ask me a tough question, and I'll I'll deflect and say I don't have the case file. But ask me a question that I want to talk about, and I know everything about it. Sure. Right. So his relevance to the case, if he doesn't have the case file, he really doesn't have much relevance. But he's trying to stay relevant by releasing diary excerpts or, you know, putting, well, this was part of the filmmaking process and it got leaked or whatever his story is. Um, move on, you know, move on with your life. If, if you think justice was served. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't think he's got anything else to move on to because right. this has been so consuming in you know, the last, you know, 20 years of his life. Uh, it, he got, he, you know, again, he got kind of, I think, stuck in time, right? 
because yeah, I think so. everything surround everything surrounding, you know, uh, well, various. You well, know, um, when people are calling you, CNN's calling you, and all yeah, these news stations are calling you, and they want to talk to you, and Scouting you know, Channel's it's funny calling because you. It's ma'am. He kind of owes it all to ma'am because no one was calling him before ma'am when it was just no. a case in Wisconsin. It was local, just a, local you know, reporters. regional case. Local reporters were wanting to talk to him. And I mean, he didn't go on national TV until making a murder. So, as much as he wants to complain about it, it's also what gave him notoriety. It's also what put him on the map. So, big time. It's, you know, it's a catch 22 for him or a catch 40 too long. I don't know. What it is. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, so what do you see happening this year uh anything in the case or what are we what are we looking for well i I think there's potentially another you know for me personally i'm i'm guessing it's going to be late fall early winter before we hear anything from the court of appeals i could be wrong i think it was nine months the last time i think it was not off not far from that the first time but i still think we're looking at seven to nine months before they make it a, a ruling one way or the other. So I don't think we're going to hear anything for them. I just, I'm not, I just don't see it. Yeah. And so what is the plan for the, for the channel until we hear something? What do you guys got coming down the pipe? Uh, well, I mean, I think uh, Doc and Neverly are going to continue, you know, pull on excerpts from uh, this edition of uh, Farak's book. I, I don't know. How, I'm not, I don't necessarily think they're going to do, you know, everything but certainly the key things that uh, uh from the book will be talked about uh i'm not sure what's after this chapter what what chapter that uh, he's that they're looking at doing after this uh, new witnesses emerge which you know this talks about sawinski and and Buresh right. and their affidavits and uh, you know the sawinski affidavit is you know once the call once the call got released in early 2022, that really put teeth to his his affidavit uh, that we right. didn't have before, that we were all looking for. You know, well, it's just a piece of paper. Yeah, we're supposed to be accepted it as a, we're supposed to accept it as true until proven otherwise. But I really needed more. You needed more. Everyone did, right? And we got more. So that to me, I don't know. I don't know how this can really escape the court of appeals. It would I be hard don't. because, you know, if he was, if he would have been called at the time, it would have brought in a huge amount of doubt on their star witness. Yes, that's right. Some people call him a star witness. Some say he wasn't. He's the last he was. person other than Stephen Avery. If you don't want to call him a star witness, fine. He's an integral witness. He's a very important person. He saw her that day. He admitted to seeing her that day. If yep. his if if you have a witness saying, dude, I saw that guy pushing a rav back onto the property within a right. few days after this crime, how a jury wouldn't say, wait, <laughs> what? Hold up. Uh, that's we right. We need to get to the we need to we need more testing. We need to see spot is Bobby Dassey's DNA anywhere to be found. We need to, you know, we really need to look this over and that in that in that aspect whether he saw what he saw or he didn't or maybe he's mistaken that's reasonable doubt right there i mean it well, really is even if it was mistaken identity which we know is a real thing it, it it's sure, one absolutely. of the worst ways to identify someone is by visual and memory but uh, even if it wasn't who he said uh, because originally he didn't identify bobby he just said he saw you know two people pushing this Route right. on on Which, up Avery Road. Okay, yeah. Take out the Bobby Dassey aspect. Could be. It doesn't it's matter. Still it's still a problem. Right. Yeah, it's a big problem. Unless you so, can say one of them was Stephen Avery, which he said neither one of them were. That's correct. That's exactly and, right. And he didn't say one of them wasn't Brendan, but I don't think that he would have known who Brendan was at the time. Probably not. No. No, probably not. Right. But then, of course, uh, 
Then we have Baresh's affidavit, which is less strong. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a it's a positive ID that it wasn't Stephen. Um, I mean, you know, again, he's making this affidavit, and we are supposed to accept it as a true statement until proven otherwise. I don't right. know how you resolve these things. Or adjudicated, right? Like, when it's brought, it needs to be heard in front of... That's right. You know, At least a, a judge. judge. Right. Call these is people in. And I think the process is, okay, I can't say whether you're lying or telling the truth or you have some mistaken identity. I can't say that. But in order to get to the bottom of this, we need to do that. That requires more testing. And that gives Zellner an opening to get in. That's right. And that's what they don't want. No, they do not. Why are we fighting so hard if you're so sure of the case? If you're so sure. Get finality. Like, yes. Yeah, get get reason. Get this exactly. off of our docket, guys. Give them what they want. Right. Just get this over with. It's been clogging up our system. We have other things. We have other fish to fry. We have other murderers to catch. We have other rapists and pedophiles to catch. That's right. Get this off the docket. Give them what they want. Have her test it. Prove that she's... You know, if you're so confident, you must think Zellner's wrong. Prove her wrong. Get it over right. with. Right. The fact that you keep fighting it and fighting it tooth and nail just makes people like me and Jack go, huh. Wait, what? What? what what's right. going on here? Right. Yeah. Why do you keep, well, why do you keep obfuscating? Course, that comes, again, with a caveat that you know a lot of people believe that the rap has been destroyed or, or whatever however way done violation, away with no i mean that's that would that would be a violation <laughs> supposed she, to be you're not allowed to do that the bones are supposed to be were supposed to be a violation too but clearly that didn't work out well policy without uh teeth is just words on paper right thank you so, thank you who's so that you know, that's that's kind of where we are i i really don't i really don't look for anything before a minimum of, I mean, it's been going for, you know, for a few months now. So I don't really think expect anything before fall at the earliest mm. and possibly even early winter. You know, something that's on the top of my head, kind of a different, different story. It's a little JFK related, but it talks, it's, it's about, you know, evidence and, and the perception. And I just recently saw this, that, a few days after JFK was murdered, assassinated, um, there was a Secret Service agent outside of, uh, it was either at Lyndon Johnson's home in Texas or at, at the White House. And Lyndon Johnson, President Lyndon Johnson at the time, was outside. And one of the Secret Service agents almost shot him. Really? And I think... Fuck, if they had shot him on accident, could you imagine the conspiracy theories that would have oh, it exploded loomed from that? But now we know that it would in retrospect, we know that it would have been an accident because they said it was, you know, he oh shit, I almost shot you, president, you know. Those are the God. kind of things that you know, you think back and you go, shit. I mean, the case would have completely changed. Everyone would have just assumed that he was in on it because then all the Secret Service agents shot him and then right. said, had no, to get rid of, had to silence him. him. Right. Had right. To silence exactly. him. Yeah. So you have to be careful with circumstance and you have to be careful with um, letting your conspiratorial brain go too far. Right. Um, oh, I, I 100% agree. My buddy's and, uncle had a good saying. He's like, it's good to have an open mind, but not so open that your brain falls out. <laughs> That's a great saying. But, but you know, personally, I, I I just don't... I mean, I can't really talk too much about getting too deep into the Wisconsin woodwork, but for this case, personally, the, the 2005 case... I don't see a vast conspiracy. It didn't require a vast conspiracy. It only one, took, yeah. it did not. It required very few to make it work. Very few. 
I agree. and a prosecutor and a, and a prosecutor that was looking for convictions and not the truth. That's right. And a police department who was familiar with Stephen Avery and the Avery family and thought that they were that they were all excuse the term garbage. You know, sub sub they had, a reputation. Yep. they had a bad reputation. Yep. By the county cops who were, you know, out at the salvage yard for a host of reasons. We've seen the incident reports. We know that they were not well liked. We know that they weren't respected in the community. And when you have this bad reputation and something happened, you, oh, obviously it was him. Obviously. Right. You know, right. and when you don't need a conspiracy, then you don't need nobody. Nobody plotted this. No one. You know, I, I agree with you. I think the you know decentralization, if you will, of the act of the bad actors is the only way to do it. You don't. You know, let's just say, allegedly, Colburn planted that key. He didn't tell anybody he did it. That would be not. that would be wildly stupid. Even if he thought that Lank was his best buddy who would never narc on him, he still wouldn't tell him. No, of course not. He'd just be like, "Well, I don't know what you're talking about. I found it. Come on, right? you planted it. Come on." <laughs> it was him. It was him or Link, and I'm sure Kacharski was supposed to have seen it. I'm sure of it. Yeah. That was the idea to have a third person find it, but he did That's didn't. right. The, the Calumet County he, cops he say, hey, like, what's that? I'm not going to be the one. Fuck that. I'm not going to be the... You guys are... You guys do your thing. Leave me the fuck out of it. Right. Yeah. That, or it yeah. was aliens. Could have been aliens. Kachowski could be right. Which is wildly crazy that that wasn't that that wasn't objected to. By the way, uh, what did you say, sir? <laughs> Aliens that now? Reason if that is an excuse why evidence is found in a crime scene and you're going to go with that, then let's just let's just call it quits right here. Or string queued up the music for Close Encounters. <laughs> <laughs> so what's yeah. uh, uh, what other cases are you following these days? Um, well, we've got the, um, Koberger case coming. Um, oh, yeah. I haven't really been paying too much. I haven't really been paying too much attention to any current cases. Just what, you know, uh, one of the other foul play members may tell me about or you know, they're following. I know Susan and, and Rhonda and, and some of them follow other cases as well. Uh, they talk about them a little bit, but um, I heard heard something recently about a voicemail or an audio recording in the coal in the Kohlberger case, but I didn't, I didn't dig too deep into it. That oh, I haven't that heard that. Interesting. And then, do you know anything about the um, what is it? The Long Island serial killer. Oh, I know about the case. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been following that one? Not recently. You know what? Yeah, I, I haven't watched anything recent, but one of the, I told you before we started that I've been watching some true crime docs, their compilations, their shortened versions, you know. Sure. But uh, went through, and I listened to, I'd seen this before, but I actually re-listened to this girl that, you know, I, well, I guess one of his first victims calling in on the phone, you know, trying to get the cops there. She didn't know where she was at. Right. And I listened to part of that again, but I haven't heard anything I recently. I could be wrong, but I think they connect, finally connected her. Did they? I think they finally connected her to that. Uh, to that, uh, I'm going to search that. Do you remember what his name was? I don't. I don't remember what his name was. You probably looked to type in Long Island Serial Killer and it pop up. Rex Humerman. Humerman. Um, I'll have to look into that one, but I, I, I swear to God, I recently thought, and, uh, I don't know if you watch any law and order, but they, they did a similar plot line to that case recently. Really? You know how they kind of do that. Law and order does that sometimes where they take real cases and change them just enough. Yeah. So it's yep. not the same. 
they yeah, uh, yeah. they had done that one similar to the Gilgo Beach recently. So maybe I'm confusing that with that. So I should get my facts straight. But um, yes, I'm trying to think. There was another case I was thinking about. Um, got Coburger coming up. I can't think of it. I thought of it a minute ago, and I can't remember what which case it was. That I've just kind of been looking at a little bit, but not really following. Like right. not deep, not deep. Oh, Shannon Gilbert, did they connect? Yeah, I thought that they connected. Because uh, that was the one. Because it was it was Shannon Gilbert was the one who made that nine one one call. And yes. then they went searching out at Gilgo Beach, and they didn't find her, but that's how they uncovered all these bodies. Yes. And I, I thought that they had connected it to her, but maybe I'm mistaken. I'll have to go back and look. Well, you know, the, the, I mean, the, the, the neighbor called also, saying, talking about this young girl, you know, come pound on her door and this guy's after her and so forth and so on. But, uh, you know, she, they still didn't know who she, you know, exactly where she was hmm. specifically because, you know, the neighbor can't necessarily connect that phone call to her. I mean, I, it, well, I'm sure it was, but. Wild, 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 wild stuff. Oh, you know, so. Yeah, I don't know how people get away with stuff that, that long. I don't know how you how you do that, but I guess uh, it's a wild, wild, mad, mad, mad world, I guess they say. I did watch a, a documentary last night, and it was – this was pretty much the entire thing. And whatever channel this – YouTube channel this was, it's about a case that – of course, we would never really hear about it unless you were probably living there about – it happened in Japan – and it's about this uh -huh. kid, about this kid. Um, he was born, he had a defect. His, his, you may even heard about it. Uh, his wrists were deformed and his, he, he, he had to literally move his entire forearm to make his hands move because uh -huh. he didn't really have any wrist and his fingers were really long. Anyway, uh, his family was pretty well to do. And, um, but because of, because of deformity, uh, he got a lot of he had a lot of problems, especially when he started school. You know, kids were you know bullying him, and anyway, um, as time went on, he he was actually pretty talented uh, as far as comics. He really liked comics and so forth. Anyway, this guy, oh my God, I, I really shouldn't even talk about this on here because it's what he did. It was so bad. He's he he what he would do he. he he didn't get away with too many, but he did get away with a few. Like till I caught him, uh, he would uh, kidnap these young girls, and I mean young. I'm talking about four, five, six, seven years oh, old, Jesus. and just do unspeakable things. I won't say it here. Unreal. I watched that one. I'd never heard about that case. Of course, he's they executed him. They executed him. Yeah, he's he's been gone for quite some oh, time. Oh, yeah, that's. Yeah. That's really uh, uncommon in Japan to to execute someone. Yeah, they re you, they really gotta hate you to get that far. Wow. The what he did was horrible. What he did to those kids. And and not only that, after he after each one that he would kidnap, and of course it blow up blow up the news and all that, he would contact their family. He started sending things back to them, pieces of clothing. Wow. And telling them what all he had done, and and it, it was sadistic, Jesus. just tr truly sadistic. So, Oof. yeah, yeah, that's a crazy one. Just, hey, you know what? I just looked up in an article about what is, what Kathleen Zellner wanted to test. Yeah, and it says uh, she posted on X the shirtless driver and other deposit skin cells all over the seats. Gear yes, shift, the seats. hood yeah. release, hood mm -hmm. prop, license plate, which I've been saying for a while, lug wrench. 
that's yep. your that's your sticking point, isn't it? That lug wrench well, or well, whatever the I mean, thing was. Well, I mean, the blunt and bloody instrument never got reported on. That other black than the one time. handled that black handled instrument, whether yes. it's a lug well, wrench or whatever, that was never. Well, no, that oh, that's definitely a lug wrench. Yeah. That's yeah. That's, that was a, from an emergency roadside kit. The blinker light, which was yep. one of Doctor Silkman's major sticking points, and yep. and then she says etc. So. Um, and she says the guilty do not request DNA testing, but the innocent do. That's right. That's one of the things Stephen told her to, at the beginning: test everything. So you got this force. Leave it alone. Don't get evidence. We want to shut you down. We don't want you to do anything. And quit talking about it. Quit talking about it. Go away. <laughs> And you got this other guy. I'll test anything. Test test this. I want to test that. I want to test that. I mean, it'd have to be quite the charade for Steven to continue to go through with this, to just to know, like, if he, if he really did it, to know that they're going to find your DNA and your DNA alone on it. And then right. be like, no, 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 just test it anyway, Zellner. Like, right. stringing her along, stringing everybody along. I mean, you can't put it past the human. I'm sure anything's possible, but I think it's a strong point. Like the guilty, they don't request for DNA. No. I mean, the innocent, the, the guilt, you know, the innocent are the ones that want DNA testing done. Absolutely. And, if if nothing comes back and it's only his DNA found on it, that's it. You're done. The case it. is over. It's you're over. Done. Because you got no wiggle the, room left. And she's not going to hold it back either. She's not going to so try to hide just, it. Why not just do it? Get it over right. with. That's right. You know, we know why. Of course. Because they're scared of what they would find. You know, one of the things that when it said license plate here, I'm looking at the article, it says license plate. Now, if you believe like some people believe, and it's possible that law enforcement or another suspect I think it was probably law enforcement, but that's just my own opinion. Well, what if you find law enforcement DNA on it? Problem is, law enforcement DNA is not in the system. That's a problem. It is a problem. This is something that I'd like to make a point out of. Every law enforcement officer, the day you're sworn in, gets swabbed in the cheek. Right. Now you're in the system. Yep. It, because it, just think about it. What if you're in a you're in an evidence case and you go, well, we have an unknown DNA. If you're in the system, you could say, well, it's a law enforcement. Obviously, there was some contamination there. Oh, okay, makes sense. We can move on, right? So yep. it's only it would it's only logical to have all law enforcement DNA in the system. It only protects dirty cops by not having their DNA in the system. That's right. Exactly right. I mean, even if that Sworn information in that was held... Day, it, they, they should swab you. I'm sorry. Yes, it costs you, a lot of money, but don't we want to do the right thing? Even if that that uh, those uh, DNA standards were held within a um, you know, a, a very isolated file, you know, that necessarily go out to you know everybody but they would have it at least within that department or even you know that county or whatever thing and they it came up like exactly like you said some foreign dna and like okay let's let's check against the the profiles we have oh okay you you touched it somehow whatever there we go yeah i mean how many cases are sitting there on the books going well we have a male dna but it's unknown. not connected to anyone. Unknown. Well, if it was yeah. like, oh, here we can cross it off because it's it was the 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 technician who collected, tech. who collected the yeah. DNA. It's their DNA. That's right. Oh, well, then at least you can tell the family, no, we don't have anybody, and, and maybe we could close this case because there's just no there there. Sorry, there's no there there. But if you're going to leave it open-ended and say, well, there's this unknown DNA that was never tested, and now we're going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and arguing about it in, in, you know, in court, 
should they give it to him? Shouldn't they give it to him? Who's going to pay for the testing? Blah, 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 blah. It could have been cleared up. Imagine how many cases are out there. I'm sure there's more than one. Oh, I'm sure there is. Yes, I'm sure there that is. It's non nefarious, right? And, yeah. you know, that is something that I could, I could really get behind that, you know, everybody who is involved in the, in the collection and everybody in law enforcement, you need to be swabbed because we know another point is that, I'm sorry to say this, cops do kill. They do. It's been documented. And they yes. get away with it for a long time because the DNA is not in the system unless they That's were right. arrested earlier. But if they were arrested earlier for a heinous crime, they can't be a cop. So it's like a catch 22, right? Like we, right. We, <laughs> let's figure this one out. You know what I mean? Like that just seems obvious to me that it, it wouldn't take a lot of minor steps to really improve the justice system. Number one, don't have law enforcement collect the samples. Have a third party lab collect the samples. Number two, have all law enforcement be on the records with their DNA so we can cross them off the list or catch dirty cops faster. You know what I mean? Like yep. these are That's things right. that are really basic that would solve a lot of issues. And it would uh, add integrity to the system and have more trust in the public frankly. I agree. Absolutely. It needs to be done. I think that I think, uh, you know, state crime labs need to be isolated. They can't just be for one side. And it, it is can't. like that in some jurisdictions. It's not, you know, it's, this is not a foreign idea. It's not like it's only happened in Nicaragua or something like in this country, it's done that way in jurisdictions. It just needs to be universal. It just needs to be, you know, cut out, cut out the, you know, create a middleman. We should, we don't want to cut out the middleman. We want to create a middleman. Um, and right. I know it's going to cost more money. Sorry. Nothing is free in this world. If you want justice to work, it's going to cost money. I know it's not well, a, a popular thing to say and nobody wants to raise their taxes, but if you want, a working justice system is going to cost money. If you want it to work properly, that's exactly right. right. And which is what I think everyone, I think that's their demand. They want a fair system and it's got to be, it can't just be fair for one side. It's got to be fair for the both sides. That's right. That's right. Uh, like, like I said earlier, you have to, you have to allow um, even the assumed guilty to have a robust de defense. It's, it's the only way the system works. That's right. Keeps the it keeps the uh, prosecution honest and. Um, well, I think it forces really honesty. It, it, for, it forces more honesty within the system. Even though you're you're always going to have the bad player. Right. And frankly, and it, it, as much as it sucks to say, you're going to have some people get off who should be locked up. That's just the you're, nature you're of our system. Catch them all. Right? No, no, you're not. You're absolutely not. So the ones that we do catch, we better make sure that it, we got it right. That's right. It can stand up to scrutiny. That's right. And holding back appeals and playing games with appeals and delay, delay, delay tactics. That's not right. It's not right. No. What they've been doing to Stephen Avery and, de and de denying all this stuff. Like, like I said before. If you were so sure and you had nothing to worry about, What's the problem? do the taxpayers a favor and get it over with. Yep. Let yep. her test the shit. Prove that there's nothing there there and shut him down and say, yep. go away. Go away. We beat you again. But they don't. Why don't they do yep. that? Why don't they do that? And then short of some, some new evidence that comes in, then... It is the case is is what it is, right? Right? Yeah. So it's uh, it's mind boggling to me. It's you know, and to go back to you know police misconduct a little bit, that ends up costing taxpayers money, a lot of money, big time, big time money. Hey, did you catch the uh, documentary American Nightmare on uh, Netflix? Nope. But I will add it to my list. Definitely watch it. And if that doesn't remind you of, well, at least 
at least the, towards the, the front end of it. In a nutshell, uh, this guy, Dayton, him and this his girl, they're dating. They're pretty very much in love. Anyway, um, he wakes up. She's been kidnapped out of his out of their apartment, his apartment, I think. Anyway, can't find her. You know, they're putting out everything in the world trying to get get her. And well, anyway, this detective Hall's This happens in. Uh, I think it's Van Nuys, California. I, I think that's where it was. Anyway, they haul him down to this guy, this boyfriend, down to the police station, and he basically starts accusing him pretty quickly. You know, what'd you do to her, and where's she at, and y'all have a fight. And he's telling them that didn't happen. But the the story that that took place was that these people broke in on him, and uh, uh, this guy broke in on him has. Uh, you know, he was camouflaged. He didn't know who it was, and they didn't believe him. <laughs> they just didn't believe him. And so he gets under the gun, you know. So I think it's a three or four parter. Anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you any more of it. It you need to watch it. It's insane what they do. It's crazy. So that's and, one of the and, things and what and and what happens really afterwards. We should have like a, a, you know, like how they have book club, Jack. Like, what if we yeah. had documentary club where, um, you know, like we just we all go and watch it and then come back and talk about it, like the week. Oh later. my God, I, I could talk fun. about this one for hours. It was fun. actually it was actually Neverly that told me about it, and um, I watched it not too long later. I think Ron had watched it too, but man, oh man, it's insane. I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. So they basically they accuse the the boyfriend and it's not the boyfriend. Right, 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 right. No, it's no, absolutely not him. No. Mm-mm. <laughs> I heard uh, something about what was it the uh, who's that girl that got accused in Italy? Amanda. Amanda Knox. Knox. I think she she's being sued coming. again. Is she? I know she's. I, I think there's a. She, Faces slander retrial over accused bar owner of murder. Wow. So yeah, she's in the news again. Uh, Amanda Knox retrial over slander conviction begins in Italy. American appeal. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think I did see a blurb about that. I didn't really read into the story much, but. She wrongly accusing a bar owner of murdering the British student. So she accused someone else of doing it, and now she's being sued because of those accusations. So it must oh be a God. civil, civil um, lawsuit. Civil lawsuit. Yeah. I think I did see part of an interview where she said she gets to tell her story. So maybe that's going to be part of this. So Knox, 36, was planning to attend the retrial on Wednesday at Florence's appeals court, but her lawyer told the news agency that she remained in the U.S. as she is busy taking care of her two children, one of whom was recently was born recently. So she's like, nah, I'm not going to go to that. Find me guilty, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then what, you know, so that's interesting. Yeah, but she was in the news recently. That was a that's a wild case too. That's oh my god. That was a nightmare of a. That's a, I want that's just a nightmare, I, nightmare too. Speaking of cases, and I you know I, I don't really try to keep up with these because this guy does it. Was a guy. He's got I mean, he's got a Twitter account and an Instagram account, um, but I follow him on uh, TikTok, and I'm not a big TikToker. I'm just not. There, there's a few that I follow my. My son, yeah. my oldest son, is the one that actually got me to watching this guy. His name is Tizzy Ent, T I Z Z Y E N T, and he report he'll re- report. People will send him news stories and video. He'll he'll gather video and whatever he can get, and he's really good because he's got millions of followers. And they they won't know who somebody is that's done this crime, and he'll say, "Come on, wherever this happened out in the you know." United States, who is this? And people will write him and tell him who these people are, and they he helps you know he's he turns everything over to the local police and all that. And I'm not sh- I don't I don't think I ever showed this one with you. He uh, this has been several months ago now. 
This happened in St. Louis. This cop, now, this cop, and this was fairly late at night. Uh, I, 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 I'm guessing, you know, moving towards midnight. Anyway, this cop is going down, and this is downtown. He swerves and runs into this bar. Now, it's an LG, L, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a gay bar. He smashes into this bar. Of course, the owner lives upstairs above the bar. Now, he, it's his. And so, of course, it wakes him up. You know, the bar's closed. It wakes him up. So he goes downstairs, find out what the hell happened, you know. This cop, of course, more cops soon arrive, but this cop is like, who are you? What are you doing? He's like, well, I live here, number one. Number two, you ran into my bar. You wrecked into my bar. What are you doing here? <laughs> so anyway, all these cops show up. They arrest the bar owner. They arrest him and take. He ends up actually end up. I think they beat him up. He ends up going to the hospital and they took him to jail. Nobody knew what happened to him. Huh. Well, this guy Tizzy, he's really good. At any updates that he can get, and he's done. I think two or three on this one. He. Uh, well, anyway, uh, that happened. Well, then he had an update, and the police said, well, this cop said, now this cop should have been drugged. He should have been drug and alcohol tested on the spot, but they didn't do it. That's their policy, and they didn't do it. Well, then, then this next update came out, and he, the St. Louis Police Department said, well, he swerved to miss a dog that had run out in front of him. That's the reason he crashed into the building. Oh, okay. And there was some more stuff to that second update. Well, there was a third update. Somebody got a hold of the traffic cams <laughs> or other building cams and showed this guy driving straight down the road. There is no dog. And he just drove into the damn building. What? Yeah. Some well, I mean, there's there, there's there's more to it, man. I'll try to grab you the links and you can watch for yourself. You're going to you're going to say, what the? I'm not sure where the case is standing now, but I'm I'm sure this bar owner has a lawsuit against him, or he could have. I don't know whether he's got the guts to sue him or not, because clearly something's going on there that I think the cop was probably drinking or, or something. I, I don't really know. I mean, maybe for all I know, he had a spasm, but that's not that's not what how that's all just turned out. During, well, during that second update. Uh, after the guy got released, the bars open. There were multiple police cars and like police a police van sitting across from his business for an extended period of time. After all this happened, and it got blew up in the media, at least in that part of the country. It, it was just I mean that seemed like an intimidation thing to me. I don't know, but uh -huh. I'll send you the videos. You can you can you can watch them if you want. Really hey, interesting. Hey. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. Maybe watching documentaries and then talking about them. I uh, what is it? might be something yeah, there. I'm always down for a good documentary, man. Well, what is that one that you said? American Nightmare. It's only three episodes. Yeah, American Nightmare. Yeah, it's it's really good. It, It'd be fun. It, it, it'll yeah, blow you away. No. The time it's all said and done, you're gonna be your your jaw's gonna be on the floor. I'm sure, but the way, but the way that, but but the way this cop zeroed in on that boyfriend without, with nothing, he absolutely had nothing on this kid, and he's a good kid. He didn't, he didn't have it. That, uh, I want to get a <laughs> conviction, and I want to get it now, and I want to get this yeah. done. I want to get home to have dinner. Yep. You know? And uh, you know, there's a you know statistics. They're always fighting the statistics and. We want to close this case as soon as possible. We don't want to cost the county a lot of money. We just want to get it, get a suspect and get it done with. And uh, it speaks to the lack of training a little bit, don't you think? Like it's we need to we we need to do the right thing, and we need to uh, uh, make sure that we do the right thing. Um, well, I'm sure I'm sure for them, you know, for police that are, that are there day in and day out, there there becomes a monotony and um, 
that 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 in itself can become part of the problem. I think a large part of the problem, because I'm sure they do see it with some of these same characters. They're they're trouble, and so that kind of carries itself to other cases that come along yeah. that from somebody that they don't know. And so they're like, ah, oh, this sounds just like this guy over here you or this guy over here. Kind of got to remember, like every case is different. You got to remind every yourself. Every case is continually. That's right. There's no that's, similarities, right? Anything, it's just a coincidence, right? Like that. That's that's right. That's Until right. proven otherwise. Right. And and yeah, exactly. And you won't know until it's all over if there are actual similarities because you know it it, it becomes a problem that. Um. Well, it must be the boyfriend. It must be the husband. Has to be. It's always the husband. It's always the boyfriend. It's always the husband. You know, and uh, that, you know, walleye vision is going to cause problems, and you're going to let the wrong. You're going to put the wrong guy in, and you're going to let the murderer go free. If that's always the attitude, I've actually heard that it has it has shifted a little bit. That the stats are not that it, it includes more people now. That and they used to say it must be the significant other. But now it's it, that bubble has expanded to known people, like in their circle, right? So it's not just the boyfriend, but it's the neighbor, the, the acquaintance, and then right. if you then then the percentage is like sixty percent or something like that. Someone they knew, like less and less are we seeing people murdered that are just random. It's just it's just I, random, you know. I can I can see where uh, you know uh, police definitely want to start within that small circle. I I get it, but if you have nothing, if you have nothing, move on. Right. D- don't, don't just continue to, <laughs> to go after the significant other, right? I would think you know other than you just saying, well, you know, it's always always the husband or always the wife. You know, it, you need more. You do need more. Well, we'll have to do more another time too, huh, Jack? What do you think? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Just let me, just let me know. Talking, having a little chat. Yeah, it's been a while since we really had the time to sit down and just talk. So uh, definitely enjoyed it. For sure. I'm going to think about watching a documentary and then having a little book club kind of thing about that. I think if there's anybody else who might be interested in, I know there are people that, you know, that always want to talk shop and, uh, you know, as as we're waiting over the next uh, few months, abide your time over summertime. Uh, well, we wait to hear something from that, uh, from the Avery case and other cases that you're following. It might be interesting, uh, you know, kind of have a little coffee clutch kind of thing going on. Right. What is your opinion on this? What did you what did you like about that? What didn't you like? That kind of sounds fun. Always looking for another uh another project coming up i know i'm going to be busy i have uh i have my own um you know work to do my classes that i do and uh it takes up a lot of my time but um i do enjoy getting caught up with the true crime and having a little rap with you jack and maybe i'll reach out to some other folks and have a little conversation what about for the summer for, for you working through the summer as well are you off or? I work and I take class. Yeah, I I only have two actual classes left uh, before I start my dissertation. Um, I got my topic approval, um, which was not easy, which was kind of a bear and took up a lot of my time. That uh, that was a, that was difficult to kind of zeroed in. But I'm going to be focusing on um, researching, you know, people who have used artificial intelligence as a design tool in education and right. uh, researching like what were you know what did they what worked what didn't work um to what extent is it a useful tool and um hopefully to be able to figure out how to share that with other educators and people about how to use you know chat bots and other tools uh you know to make to to make better education to save time and one of the main things, and I think this would work in a lot of applications of AI, and that is if I can use this tool to save me time, I can apply my skills to something else that needs to be worked on. So it's not like I'm trying to save time to cheat. I'm not, you know, I'm not like, oh, well, I have ChatGPT do all this work for me just right. because I want to go home early. Right. 
No, that gives me, that frees me up so I can focus on more important stuff. And if we look at it through that prism, um, I think it's really important that we learn how to use these tools. So that's kind of what I'm focused on. So I'll be digging into the next, over the next couple of years of writing this, this thing. And uh, I think I'll wrap it up in 2025, I guess. First, sure. you know, early 2025, I should be done. Um, nice. I can't do it faster because I have to, I have to do to get credits to graduate. I have to take so many classes. Sure. So even though I could probably write it a lot faster, I need the the, the class credits. So. Um, but you're you're te you're teaching a couple of classes, right? As well, is that right? Yeah, I teach uh, writing composition right now, uh, right. and uh, and then this summer this summer I have one class um, that meets three days a week for three hours, which is kind of a lot, but. Uh, it's okay. We'll get through it. And then, you know, full schedule in the fall. So um, I will be kind of busy. But one of the cool things is I think I'm finally zeroing in on getting a car that I've been dreaming about. Um, I used to do the the Turo. Do you know what Turo is? Uh, I've heard rent of it. Rent out your own car. It's like Airbnb for your car, basically. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I used to do that. And you know, living in Hawaii, there's a lot of tourists here. And so the car rental companies, they're really expensive. And, but for Turo, you can kind of rent out your own car and uh, kind of undercut the, the rental car companies, basically. Sure. sure. And uh, you can rent from me a lot cheaper. And uh, one of the things that, that's cool about that service is that, like, I can rent out a tent and beach chairs and a blanket and a cooler and I can, and that way, when people come to visit, they don't have to buy a cooler. They can just rent mine for five bucks a week or whatever. You can rent right. my picnic chairs, and you can't do that with a rental car company, right? They don't offer that stuff. But no, here you can rent with, and you're giving your money to a local person instead of some large rental company. And so, Agency, yeah, that's kind of one of my my side projects. And I didn't want to get a car loan because i was like after covid i got rid of all my car loans and i got rid of all my stuff and i just wanted to get get done with you know the interest Debt payments free. of the monthly payments so i've been yeah saving, saving saving to get a car and i think uh by the end of the month i will i'm gonna fly to honolulu i'm actually getting it through rental car company so that's funny um fly to honolulu and test drive a car and you know it's awesome they that... handle the inter-island shipping for me. I was like, what? Come on. Really? Like, yeah, we'll, we'll put it on the boat for you. You just pay the bill on the other end. And I was like, oh. oh. Okay. Like, I'll call you in six months for the second car that I hope to get, you know? So uh, so I'm, I'm excited about that. That's kind of my summer plan is to get that as my other source of income, my little side gig that I, I had some success with before, so interesting but because uh, and i'll tell you what, I'll, out, i get to drive a new car well fairly new three-year-old car coincidentally and my wife uh, she's been looking for a car and uh, she went and drove one actually we looked at it um, a few days ago she couldn't get towards that it's not too far from here but the car lot anyway um found one she really liked it's a Nis nissan kick Oh, I'm looking at a Nissan too. Um, yep. I like the kick. Small car, easy to park, easy to maneuver. Yep. Yeah, it looks good. This thing's a 2022. 20, it's got like 20,000 miles on it, very, oh, very low good. miles, and it's very loaded. Good. It's got almost every option. So she's going to pick it up tomorrow. Oh, excellent. She she, yeah, she's going to pick it up tomorrow. Very cool. Love to have a new car that works well and has AC. My car right now doesn't have AC, and I'm going to... Oh, my God. You, you'll love April it. Now. You'll by love it. Time, yeah, by the time I get it, uh, I'll probably be needing AC. And uh, This fall, I'm going to be doing a lot of driving. I got a long... I do uh, an early college class where I go to the high school, and I teach them a college course. So right. they get to earn college credit like early, which is just great because, you know, the price of college is insane. Right. And uh, every and it's free for them. So, goddamn, take as many of those as you can. Sure. But I got to drive kind of a far away. So a far distance. So I'm, I'm excited to have a decent car to get there and 
you know, we got switchbacks here. I got to go through like three switchbacks, in, you know, through three gulches to get um, over there. You know, here on the Big Island, we have, uh, they don't call it Big Island for nothing. Let me tell you that. It's <laughs> not a small island. So, um, well, it's been great kind of wrapping with you, Jack. It's been a while. I uh, wanted to try to catch up again and uh, talk about maybe developing another project or doing something. And uh, I'm going to continue doing my uh, AI uh, news. I think I'm going to start dropping those as premieres and pre-recording those. But uh, try to get that on a regular basis again. And uh, I'll try to pop in on one of your lives maybe, maybe on open mic when I got some free time and uh, sure. check in with you. And, uh, Absolutely. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, just let me know about the other, you know, whatever. And uh, yeah, Absolutely. we kick it around. That sounds cool. Um, yeah. I'm going to check that one out. American Nightmare. So if you guys are hearing this, maybe you want to watch American Nightmare. If and, you haven't uh, seen it, it's definitely, a, it's definitely a five star. Maybe maybe we could talk about that in a future broadcast. So uh, Let me know so I can rewatch it. I mean, I, it's been uh, it's been probably, oh, it's been at least out, three months. It's came been out at least January, three. so you probably watched it in January. <laughs> I think I did actually. Actually, I think I did watch it in January. It's only uh, three episodes, it looks like. Yeah, it's three hours. Yeah. Yeah, that's anybody can do that. Now read read a book for three hours. Uh, watch a, watch a documentary <laughs> for three hours. Uh, all right. Oh, uh, anyway, all right, Jack. Well, I'll talk to you soon, and thank you so much for coming, and thanks everybody for checking out uh, the the premiere here with Jack. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed our little conversation, and we will see you guys on the next one. So, thank you. Uh, I'm Jeff Jones, and thanks, Jack, again. We'll see you soon. <laughs>